Oh. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. I'm gonna go with Mario Kart today. Cycling through the lot. Double dash. Is double dash the one you typically no, play? No, triple dash. Could do, you imagine do you have Mario an emulator Kart that'll let you do the original N64 one? I do, but um, my N64 is emulator isn't binded to my controller funky? right now. I don't know if... Uh, also, maybe it's the hot take, but like Double Dash is just far and away superior to N64 Mario Kart. Damn, dude. <laughs> Lucky no one's here yet. I haven't, played, I, heard you. I haven't played yeah. them in both in a long time, and even though I don't care for Double Dash much, I would rather play it than the N64 so, version. The, the, the real interesting conversation with uh, Mario Kart is that I think people will generally just default to the one that they played first as a... Uh, this is my favorite. Well... Double Dash. Uh, no, my first one my was Super Smash. Your favorite isn't Double Dash or the my first, right? My favorite is 8. Uh, I yeah. think that it's categorical. I think that 8 is the best one. I haven't um, played 8, but I've watched people play it, and it seems to be very impressive. 8 um, has a, a problem in that the AI is not particularly great. Um, if you get ahead of the pack, you'll just fly away uh, from, from the competition a lot of the time. But... The big thing that works in 8's favor is that game has so much content. Like, I'm pretty sure that it, it has... I think it has, um... It has 48 courses. Damn. Yeah, that's, and you compare that to the, the old games. Well, yeah, because the old games had 16. Then from DS, they started doing the retro tracks. So it's 32. But then this one had DLC courses as well. Um, So you got, you got a lot of courses. You got... And you got like F Zero courses, like Big Blue, which is awesome. The music is phenomenal. Like the music in Mario Kart Eight is oh, the jazz, the saxophone on Dolphin like shoals. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. So much content. Uh, and then Mario Kart Eight Deluxe also added a proper battle mode, so it kind of made up for the shortcomings of Eight. Um, plus like the anti gravity thing and, and like flying and doing the underwater stuff is like all little modifiers on top. But I would like them to make a double dash too. And I I'll say it looks. It looks really great. It looks great. It came out in 2014. That game is uh, nearly eight years old. Doesn't look eight years old. Mario Kart 8? Great. Yeah, Mario Kart 8 came out in 2014. Uh, it's Am been I a long thinking time. of the one for this? It is on Switch 2. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Okay. All right, that might uh, be what I'm thinking. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, but the game on Wii U looks great because the Switch ain't much more powerful than the Wii U, but it, it looks great. Um, really impressive, like, rendering for a Nintendo game. I think my favorite's the DS one. Uh, I really like DS, yeah. Got good memories of it. I didn't play as much of Wii. I might be the that might be the weird anomaly. I think Wii is the one that like most people have played. That was like the most popular one, but uh, I never got it. I only ever played it through friends and but I, I really like Wii as well. It's a cool one. They added bikes. That was like the big addition of that one. I don't like seven. Seven's fun. It's it's just a nice, good Mario Kart game. Um Though admittedly, it's uh, it's kind of, it feels kind of awkward. It feels like um, you, it feels like the same situation with Smash Brothers. It's like, what do you do now? Because people yeah. are gonna expect more, but that's unfeasible to launch a game with like forty eight courses. That's that's nuts. Um, do it. And that game has like forty characters as well. Um, and admittedly, the roster isn't awesome. They've got a lot of like clone characters. Like you got Mario, Tanuki Mario, Metal Mario. And then you got like the Koopalings, which is, you know, whatever. Like, I'd much rather have um, Diddy Kong, and, you know, Diddy Kong, and um, some of the some of the like the more the guest characters they had as well. Like, uh, I don't think Piranha Plants is in that one. It's like they should probably put them in. Um, yeah, I don't know. But then you think about Smash Ultimate. It's like, man, where do you go now? This game has like ninety characters. <laughs> You're never gonna be able to deliver that again. Um, so what do you do? Do you just keep re-releasing Smash Ultimate? Just keep it going and maybe wait like 10 years before you do another Smash game? Yeah, so it's almost hype, like it's death novelty. every, you only release it once for each system, but it's a huge thing every time. Well, that that's, that's the longevity how they, for the whole system. That's how they used to do it. I mean, there's one Smash per console. There's one Mario Kart per console. There's usually one uh, Zelda per console. Maybe occasionally you get two. Um, that's usually how Nintendo does it, but the problem is, you, you know, next Switch, Switch 2 comes out, because they'll probably make a Switch 2, you put in Smash, you know, you're doing another Smash, you're just going to re-release Smash Ultimate, 
Because you probably could just re-release it. Yeah. Smash Ultimate, just have yeah. it come out again. Go the GTA Five way, just keep re-releasing it. Well, so I if guess they the re-released is... it, polished it up in terms of you know little things here and there, and then added like a DLC to it. That might be, I don't know. Like um, it's almost yeah. you almost start thinking about is this going to turn into like a a mini Ursats kind of MMO where it's just like a almost like a live service they keep adding to and adding to. Or like, what do you what do you do? And Nintendo doesn't really do live service games, so you know. It, yeah, it yeah, like I don't know. I don't know what you do with something just, like Super Smash. That's, maybe that's it is weird. just like the Marvel vs. Capcom three thing. You just keep re-releasing it. Um, just re-release it. Maybe add a couple new characters each time. Um, call it Super Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. <laughs> Ultimate Super, uh, Super Smash Duper. Brothers Super, Super Yeah, Duper. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Turbo, or like Super Smash Brothers oh, Ultimate Oh, we got the stream up. I don't Resident, think I've ever come that close uh, to I killing did. myself and surviving. Yeah, wow. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> Four-wheel drive, baby. That's what saved me, I'm sure of it. Take this hit back. Um. Yo, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, even even the way that Bowser was like animated. Let me. Yeah, it, me it looked pretty good. Like on behalf of the game, you know. Is that a? That feels just like a. You had a really robust engine here that you were using. Was oh, he? Fuck. Was Bowser celebrating? And it just looked like <laughs> an odd thing, or was that like an animation they have in the game for if you're? I think that's him young. going. Whoa, I'm falling. I think well, he was well, he was well, celebrating well. Boo's amazing driving because he knew that Boo would pull us out, out, out of that. Yeah. Yo, yeah, that's cool. They have an animation for when. Yeah, do it with other characters now and see what they do. <laughs> oh, they all have that. You think I can recreate that? That was not my skill that did that. <laughs> I think that, that was, was the engine perfect. like deciding. Have you fallen or have you survived? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, you survived. You're okay. So anyway, hi everybody. Doing yeah, a catch-up well, again not, today. Hello. By the way, when we'd set Good this, like, minutes later, Drinker sent me a text saying, catch-up tomorrow, and I was like, you never do it on Thursdays? He was like, yeah, just do it, just do it on Thursday. I was like, oh, well, oh, no. <laughs> like, I, I got, I'm gonna have to skip this one. Um, so much catching up to do everywhere, you know? Yeah. Um, speaking not of which, we're already, time. we're behind by seven. Um, right. Yep. So let's nice. get started. Gay. Yeah, let's do it. Let us answer the questions. Let us accept the comments. Oh, and let we have speak. seen Bobabu Foot. Uh, there's no reason why we can't. You've seen like, Booby Foot. Yes, we have. You will the get um, an EFAT Mini is on the way, folks. Uh, no idea what day exactly that's coming out, but you'll get now. it. It'll be before yeah, the next before. episode releases. We're going to try and stay on top of this one. The, the important thing, though, oh. that, that we all need to remember about Book of Boba Fett that is nice is Max Rebo, he's okay. He made it out. He didn't get blown up. He he survived. I'm glad. I'm he, really glad he made it out okay. And he's still and he's still doing what he loves. He's still playing. Mm -hmm. He's still doing what he loves. Yeah, playing That's music success. in Mars. The real that success, is success. Story. He's found his life's purpose. He's playing he's music in few, Little Mars. He's one of the few characters in Star Wars where you can legitimately say, yeah, things worked out. He had a happy ending. He just their he, planet he does didn't what he get loves. fucking exploded. Yeah, they didn't have their character completely assassinated and reversed, and all of their yeah. accomplishments. No, he's not still just playing jazz. He hasn't, yeah, he's... he hasn't become he hasn't become disillusioned with jazz. He still loves it. Yeah, he funny. has a passion that he's pursuing. You just like the only thing we see of him knowing he's alive again is him fucking beating up, like destroying his instruments. Cause it's like, hey, it's the thing in Star Wars. Okay, they come back the opposite of what they were. <laughs> That's how it works. Um, but yeah, we'll probably do some tidbits here and there. When I said next episode, I mean next Boba Fett episode. Like it'll, we're gonna do EFAP again before you'll be able to see that mini. Um, mm -hmm. I've done a decent chunk of it, but I don't think it'll be finished even by tonight. Uh, I've started a bit of it too. Yeah, and it's been fun to get back into editing minis. Kinda, they're a, they're a refreshing, different thing compared to video. Compared editing. to other projects. Yes. Yeah. Mahler, um, is it more fun to edit it or to watch it? Like watch um, the show or edit oh, the, us watching it? A great question. I think I'm probably going to go with watching it, but only on stipulation I'm with you guys, because if I was watching it on my own, I'd rather oh. edit. Yeah. <laughs> It'd just be 
dull. <laughs> it was, uh, well, so I guess it's There's when I ripped that bandaid off, like, a lot what? of people are like, nah. is it good? Is it good? Is it good? It's like, no. It's Mando. Oh, of course it's not. Just Mando it's again. just Mando it's again. Mando again, yeah. Mando, same, but... Same yeah. Like, what are predictions? It's like, there'll be sh two mandated shitty fight scenes. It's like, well, at least. And, and it was like, yeah, we are those. And it's like, there's basically no character or any allusions to that. And it's like, that's pretty yeah. much what we got so far. A lot of wasted the, the time. The most character-oriented thing that we got for Boba Fett is a scene where he puts on his armor. No, where he has robots put on his armor because he doesn't... He can't Boba be doing Fett has himself. lost his way. I don't... It's weird to see that like, he's lame, got robots. To do. It is lame. It's like, you should put that on. You should be putting it on. You don't need to put that... You need to trust yourself with your equipment, not these robots. You'd be like, no, I'm putting this on, I'm checking it, I need to make sure it's good. I'm not putting this in the hands of these robots to click on my gauntlets, which don't seem to be connected yeah, to like, anything. Anymore. Do you remember, there's a part in the episode where they're like, oh, what, where's your um, where's your like entourage, or where, where's your, like, I can't remember what they describe it as, but basically a thing where you sit on it and everyone else carries it to get you around. They imply that that's how um, uh, Bib Fortuna was, was moving around. So they're like, oh, where's your thing of that? And then he's like, um... I walk I where I want to go, something feet. like that. Yeah, my own two feet. And it's just like, that to me So like, you is... walked all the way to Jabba's, from Jabba's palace to the town? Well, I guess yes. that's an interesting thought, actually. <laughs> I wonder how, maybe it's, real, maybe it's real close, I don't know. Um, maybe. But the point I was making was more so that, that that sounds more Boba Fett than I need someone to dress me. It's like, hmm. And the small, there's way bigger things. It's just something that we didn't talk about in the recording, I don't think. I feel like Boba Fett would be like, yeah, I ride a speeder because it's a long-ass way and I got shit to do. I would even have him be like, maybe even that it starts where it's like someone's trying to dress him and they get like one little thing wrong and he's like, ah, oh, fuck it, and takes it off them and then does it himself and he's just like, I can dress myself, for fuck's sake. I'm a different like kind the, of ruler. Like, the robots are there, like, standing around and he's like, what? He's like he doesn't know what they're there for because he's not even in that mindset this idea that he has other people dress him he's he's so down to earth and he does things himself and he's in that sigma male grind set oh, yeah. that the the concept that he needs to rely on these you know robots to put his clothes on put his armor on like he like he isn't the best at doing that in the entire universe is he doesn't even register in his mind I now like the idea that Boba Fett just has the Sigma male music playing all the time. All the time. <laughs> Every he wakes, you know, his alarm clock is do 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 <laughs> It's a great song. Well, no, it's not, but I I love the meme. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great. It's well, so no, good. I just love the meme. <laughs> so true. It's a really good meme. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, Boba Fett's not good. So uh, you'll get a video on it later. Yeah, and, and <laughs> we'll have us. Well, we're gonna probably do the season. The first episode worked pretty well as a recording. Yeah. Um, I shouldn't have been surprised. And I suppose. We well, asked I think a lot of still, questions. I think we entered into this one as we try to do like good faith. Um, and then it takes not long to be like. Oh, uh, once again, <laughs> where are all our compliments? Like the visuals, that soundtrack, nice. the acting yeah. to a that degree. Good. Yeah, like it, it's all stuff that was like, yep, that that was all good in Mando as well, pretty much. The actors just aren't playing characters, and the sets aren't places you care about, and the graphics are just all right. Yeah, it looks that's a nice spaceship that's taking off to go to a place that I don't care about carrying people that aren't even like people. Hey man, Disney's got money. And we spent a it while shows. doing things that could have been done way quicker because it feels like we've probably got a little bit of padding coming as well. Yeah. Gotta dig for them water things. You shouldn't have to pad a show like this. No, no. It should no. be full of things that you want to do and full of stuff that you want to see him doing. Yeah. And half the episode's like, I'm gonna dig in the dirt. I don't know about half, but yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, if I think it's just the fact that the scene felt long, so we were just like, what are we doing? Come on! Well, remember the segment where it's like, oh, I'm gonna poke you with my stick, and now we're gonna go over here, and now we're gonna go look at these people harass this water farmer, and that's done. Now we're gonna go over here to this thing, and now we're gonna dig, and then now you're gonna drink, and you're not supposed to do that. Now I gotta pour it out. 
and now you're gonna dig some more. And he's like, oh my god, a monster. And like, he, he's... There are many scenes where we just wonder, why did this happen? Why are we here? What what are we doing? Mm -hmm. This is not a you show that is paced choices. well. Oh, hell no. Do you know how many episodes there are of this thing? Seven. Oh. Seven. All right. Oh. That's so it's not a bit shorter many. than Mando. So be... Well, Mando had eight. So. Well, yeah. Uh... I don't know, it seems to me like we're going to be dealing with a pretty small and quick story, for the most part. And Especially man, if it keeps do... going paced like this. Fucking nothing will happen. But you could do like a Book of Boba Fett season that's like 22 episodes. You could. You absolutely could. There are At insane amounts of things you could do. It's like they want the, um, the, the, the prestige of the, the miniseries. I think there is a prestige, because you know, it's like British shows, like it's six episodes a season, because they're good. It's like, so a lot of them are good. But like, it's not because of six episodes. Not because that. they're so good, we, like. But I, yeah, I, Chernobyl's I only right. five. Well, it 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 just varies, right? I think I think you're right though. There's almost like a certain no. If you don't like 22 episodes a season, that's like network television. This is like cable television. Yeah, that's like, like Seinfeld. That's like NCIS. That's, that's like, like Cheers. Criminal Minds. Yeah. Yeah. Not like not like uh, not not like Game of Thrones. I had what six episodes. Look at how great those were. Oh, and um. Continuing the tradition of Rise of Skywalker, uh, characters in this episode do not know where Up is. That's uh, true. Unfortunately, yeah. it's the one character you'd really not want it to be. <laughs> but it bad is. news, guys. We got we got the Mando effect in full force here. Boba's competence is just falling off a cliff pretty Minimal. quick. Minimalist. And it's weird because um, you'd think the problem would be that he's hyper competent because they want to give fans what they want. Sure, how much of a badass he yeah. is, yeah. Which I'd be more Instead okay with. Like, uh, you're a oh, absolutely. I would expect him to be super competent, you know? Especially at this age, man. How much has he had to learn? Absolutely. But he still doesn't know how fucking jetpack works. Oh, well. Yeah, I mean, you'll see our coverage. We're going to do the whole season, I'd imagine. I feel like this will be... Pretty uneventful, the, the show. I'd be mean, like, it's gonna be pretty easy for us to comment on. I don't think they're gonna do anything. Maybe the last episode they'll do something special, like a, a cameo. There'll be a cameo probably for some fucking Ewan McGregor or something to promote his show. Well, yeah, because yeah. that's up next, isn't it? Well, wait, actually, this is this is post OT. I guess it could be his ghost. <laughs> fucking no. Hey, Boba. It's okay. <laughs> do I know you? I... No, <laughs> we've never met before. <laughs> I, met your, okay. I met your dad once. We had a very awkward I, I met... fight. Nothing was accomplished. Like, did you kill my dad? Yeah, like, like, no, 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 no
you know, when you're being strangled, you just sort of let it happen. You just don't try to do anything about it. Like, ah, uh, rip. I'm out. But, um, yeah, I don't know how it exists out there, but uh, I guess we'll just have to assume it really, it just, it drinks the fuck out of those weird balls of water. And, uh, yeah, preys on passerbys. I just like the idea of Machamp sitting out in the desert, like, oh, he's never gonna suspect me sitting out here in the sand. The best way to Unsuspecting people. sand people and, uh, Greedos. Uh, the creature itself might be a reference to the Kraken in Clash of the Titans, by the way. Um, saw someone comparing images of him on Twitter and I was like, oh yeah, that's kind of one-to-one. Oh, okay. Um, doesn't mean anything really. What's but... <laughs> the connection though? Is it just, hey, the Kraken's I, pretty cool? Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, so Unless it's, it's totally hollow. <laughs> some some kind of, I mean, you can always look into anything, right? And it's like, look, the story clashed with Titans and how, you know, maybe it means it, it's it's referring to oh, oh, Boba Fett proving himself, you know, some, some shit. I don't know. I don't want to make reasoning for it. Um, did anyone play Crash Tag Team? It was also great. Yes. Um... I like Crash Tag Team Racing, but the game is horribly unbalanced. Enjin is like the best character in the game, because his combo weapon is a rocket launcher that kills in an instant hit, unlike basically every other. I think Nino also had like a one hit, so like they were the best combo in the game. Um, you just So if you're Enjin at the beginning of the race, combo with someone, get on the turret and blow everybody away. Right when you fit, uh, reach the finish line, uncombo, and if you initiate first, you get a boost and you win. It's just that's that's how you win that game 100% of the time. Uh, I do like that game though. That game is uh, that game is cool. Yeah, fair enough. I never played it. Wow, I mean, Crash Team Racing is like peak Crash. Honestly, might be like peak Kart Racer, like. I really do like Mario Kart 8, we talked about it, but uh, Crash Team Racing's core mechanics are stronger. Um, I think the drift system is better. It's more skill-based. Lots of cool shortcuts. Great courses, great characters. Fringy, is it worth going to Australia to celebrate New Year's before going back to the US to celebrate it again? What can and can't do there in your region? I mean... It might be difficult for you to get a flight here in time, because mm. <laughs> you only got, uh, you, you ain't got long, you got, like, what, just over, like, 16 hours until New Year. Um, I guess that's always a, that's always an option. If you wanted to have New Year twice, but you need to be quick on that plane flight back to LA, I guess, <laughs> to make sure that you get it a second time around. Um, when will Mola finally watch Arcane? It's like, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're oh. getting there. we got to finish Kingdom first. Well, we've almost done that. And we're close. We're close. Two episodes left. Uh, I want Drinker to say, Ya use me, Skinner. Why? Because I'm here? That doesn't make sense. Ya use me, Mola. Ya use me. me. Uh, in a roundabout way, Ellie got cancelled for giving a... Sorry, Ellis got cancelled for giving <laughs> an... Yeah, I, 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 uh... So, we got, oh, Lindsay Ellis got cancelled for giving an Atler-adjacent hot take. So when will you Dumbos talk about Atler at length to cancel yourselves? We've already done that. <laughs> we did get cancelled, but... The thing is... And wasn't... Her thing specifically was that she said that Raya was... She said that all YA Atler, novels right? are basically just, like, rip-offs of Atler. Um... Right. Why fiction in general? Um, wasn't wasn't it specifically because like Raya and the Last Dragon that film is set like a Southeast Asian setting, and so people were like, well, wait a minute, is that like is that why you were drawing? I well, from memory, that, was that was it really, right? I remember or, seeing it and just being like, what a meh thing to say, but of course it's it's absolutely like haram for fucking Twitter, <laughs> so because they're all insane. So yeah, it, it, you know, she's been cancelled. There's some stuff she's done that's genuinely horrible, um, as, as well as having been a linchpin for this fucking retarded culture we're in right now online. Uh, definitely hoisted by her own petard. At the same time, um, I'm sure she does get shit tons of harassment 
as have we all. And uh, as does everyone. The internet. Big. Well, yeah, and, and you know, if life. if the best thing for it is to leave, then leave. I I, I really would recommend that for basically everybody. Um, get out of here if it, if it's too noisy and too loud and and, and just just too too rough. Get, get out. Mental health, you know. Buy a We're habit, not all built for this. Or rather, I think no none of us are built for this. It's just that some of us can get through it, some of us can't. I think it's just the standard thing, right? Of like all of us just fucking Xbox 360, PS3, like online chat in the in the early, mid, and late, like the 2000s. Just trial by fire in that era, you know? Oh, yeah. You just. Yeah. Human beings did not evolve to be Twitter celebrities, so not all people can probably just handle that. Just keep that in mind. Yeah. CGI young Harrison Ford's going to show up in some point in Book of Boba Fett, search your feelings, you know it to be true. So the only reason why I think that that might actually happen is because it got confirmed recently that he's done work as Han Solo to turn up in something soon. Jeez. Man. He must so, need money? I don't know about... Young, wait, it's young. It, it, well, like it would be young compared to Harrison Ford's age. Um, but he wouldn't be, you know, he because he would be between the OT and the sequels, Han Solo. Um, ah, but yeah, he ah. might just, you know, Boba Fett's at a fucking bar. He's or in some the shit. process of becoming a loser. I thought that, like, I thought that he didn't want to do any Star Wars stuff anymore. I thought anymore. so too. I thought he... But that's my thought. I don't know. Maybe I... that Disney Plus money. I don't know. Uh, well, because I, I, I always... I'm not really saying that, that like, the... as a criticism. Like, that might just be it. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Um, either way, it could be that he and Boba Fett have a have a meetup, and that's really meaningful to the fans, because Boba Fett's the one that got him into the Carbonite, right? And it's like, the, oh, that's going to be great. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have a drink together. I just don't <laughs> care. <laughs> Whatever it ends up being, it's probably going to be shit. Uh... Um, but yeah, you know, that could happen too. Um, also, you Dumbos all have Nintendo Switches, so when are you all going to play Mario Party Superstars since it has online? Oh, and play DDLC. Um, it's just that'll be something of a project to try and sort out at some point, and that's definitely not one of those, I say that, and I know in my head it'll never happen. It's like, no, 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 that could happen, seriously. I know Metal would be on board with it, and I think if the four of us oh, can yeah. get that set up, that'll be really fun. Mm -hmm. um, same for Mario Kart as well on Switch. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, set up an online tournament. Yeah. Have people jump Well, we in. can battle against the Geeks and Gamers crowd. They do a lot of Mario Kart. Right. Though I'd have to get used to the that Mario Kart, because I'm good at Double Dash. I'm not good at any of the other ones, at least for now. <laughs> I'm good at none of them. This is not my gaming forte, so we'll see. We'll also, see someone, how we do. Someone in chat is totally going to quote me as, he's good at Double Dash? Like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Cap of face. Um, today's animal of the day is the boom slang. Nice. The boom slang. Oh, it's a snake. Oh, hmm. look at him. Look at that critter. I think this one's interesting, not only for its colors, but the fact that it's called a boom slang. The colors are interesting, but yes, you're right. Boom slang is uh is the real draw. Apparently, its name means tree snake in Dutch and Afrikaans. Cool. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so it's boom slang. That's why it's co is that that is Wikipedia, which I rely on for so much information. But yeah, no, it's a cool looking snake. Yeah. I see your boom slang and raise you a hog nosed snake. Drama queen snake, that one. A hog nosed hog -nosed. snake. Uh. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, look at him. That's got a funny face. Yeah. He he's got like, um. It's, it's, you know, like the caricatures where, um, it's the dude who's got like a massive pronounced lower jaw, like, lower jaw, fucking, <laughs> like their jaw is just super pronounced at the bottom. Ah, oh, keep pushing her out. They have a big jaw, not mm -hmm. a big mouth. It's like, mm, look at me. Ha ha ha. I smoke cigars. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, Froggled, I'm so sorry. Uh, H-E, episode 6, Desecrates Kingpin. Oh, Hawkeye. In about 10 minutes of screen time, it's actually really infuriating. Also, get uh, AJW on as a guest. He's been requested a couple of times now. Um, yeah, we can try and sort something out. As for Hawkeye, I've been told that... Um, uh, this is, funnily enough, right, I don't know the context of it, because I haven't seen it. I do intend to watch Hawkeye for the sake of, you know understanding MCU events. Awareness. Yeah. Yeah. But um apparently Kingpin is defeated in a fight by Kate Bishop and it's like hmm I it's just Daredevil it was really hard well, for him to win. So and he was thing. wearing a suit of armor. If someone said to me like, oh so the woman just can't beat a man like what if she has a gun and he's not even like I'd be like, no 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 no. It's like I'm strictly talking narrative satisfaction. Should he really be beaten by her in season one where he's only just well, come in? What's the connection between him and her as opposed to the kid because, you know, when Daredevil fought Haw uh, Kingpin, it was the end of the season. We had a whole season of conflict between them. It's it's all leading up to this fight between these two. Um, and, he's and like yeah, it a just, powerhouse. Well, he's uh, a really good fighter. He's trained super hard to be a fighter. He's wearing a big Chunga suit of armor. And even with that, he still it gets in trouble. Like... Yeah, Kingpin is strong. That if there's like one word to describe him, he is strong. He is a chungus. You think you could just fight a woman in the MCU and all that training is gonna do anything for you? <laughs> this is the thing. I'm not even like talking about whether or not well, it makes sense because I, I haven't seen it. I'm just a... saying, why would you want to do? It reminds me of Kylo and Rey. It's like, why did you do that? Well, so, I, I mean, I can imagine that Kate is like a better fighter than he is, but I guess it's a thing of like. I guess I have to see how it plays out and what information we have well, on, you, on her and what she's doing. Because I said this on, I think it was Friday Night Tights, I was like, what you want is for her to do a lot of really talented things to get around and yes. outmaneuver him, and, yeah. and she's hurting him, maybe scratching or something, he gets one punch, and it slams her into a wall that cracks apart, and she, like, slowly hobbles away because of the, the damage that's done on its own, just one hit. Well, just, that's how it happened in, in Daredevil. Like, once Kingpin got one really good throw in, he just throws Daredevil, like, across the alleyway into a bin. It's it um, strong. It's what we want to see, because then... It's, it's like the most basic storytelling stuff. It's, this is, by the way, the kind of stuff we often talk about being incorrect, necessarily, in terms of just, uh, you don't have to do this. But you have a villain, you make them fuck up your hero, and then she's going to get him later. I can win. You know, just, like just, yeah, yeah. Especially an end to the season. Like, what a great way to well, be like, we have goals. <laughs> One of them is defeating this guy. Right? I mean, goddamn, Daredevil, he fought Nobu, he got his ass handed to him. It's the kind of shit like, I just don't get. Like, why, why? You... It's standard. It's standard. You, they, they fight and then they lose, and then he comes back stronger after learning a lesson. They fight and he wins, or she wins, I guess, and in this case. I've seen a lot of the people who like the Hawkeye show even say that the finale is the weakest part. Um,. And so I was like, right. I guess this has probably pissed off a lot of people who are fans of Kingpin. So I'm assuming they don't do that. Because, like, this is the thing. If someone said, like, she has to defeat him, is there any way to do that satisfactory? And it's like, probably. It's going to be hard, though. I don't know why you would establish him, though. I, I feel like it's it's entirely directed by... We need to have a reveal for him at the end of the season. And then we need him, at least, to some level. Or, alternatively, I guess, have him as a, a tease for, like, the next project. Um, I, yeah, I, I, but then again, I'm not sure why you wouldn't just do that. Just have him be the tease for, like, because they're doing, like, an Echo show, right? So he's probably going to be in that. Just have that be the teaser, the stinger. Don't just, like, bring him in at the end. And then it uh, just feels like an odd choice. But uh, I guess we'll have to see the show in the context. Yeah, like I it said, it could be better, out. it could be worse than what we think it is. Yeah. I'll have to see. Um, anyone know what Wolf thinks about Infinite? Hi, Rag. Hello. Uh, just, it's already, I don't know. This, <laughs> whether or not he, he had thoughts that it would just be something that he'd want to keep with himself. Uh, mm -hmm. If you do a full EFAP on Boba, you should really, really consider inviting Cerberus Arms. Uh, he's into media analysis lately, and he'd be a perfect fit. Oh, I assumed you'd probably pitch it by being like he's super into the show in terms of analysis or something as opposed to because like you know we could technically invite a lot of people i think in our circles are watching this show right it's not just us <laughs> I, think, mm -hmm. I would think so i think gary is going to ignore it um as is watching it i'm not sure if jay longbone's watching it i don't think jay's watching it 
Um, who else we got? Who's definitely drinker? I don't know if he's gonna watch it. <laughs> I he guess might watch it. <laughs> he uh, he yeah. still hasn't seen Hawkeye. Um, for the same fucking reasons that we haven't really. Um, so yeah, you know, we, we, we could have some people on. The first episode is just, um, me fringing in ranks, by the way. Uh, Mr. Metal is Ooh. unable to make it. I don't, I assume that he's gonna want to join us for the future ones, but I don't actually know. We shall see. It's not exactly the most enticing thing, that show, being completely honest. But, it's a fine way to spend 40 minutes or so. Because it it's is, been a while it is a since way to um, spend 40 minutes. I've talked about Star Wars, you know? Just, just, just. Well, next year seems like it's ratcheting up because we're going to do a lot of Star Wars shit now. Next year, then we got Obi Wan, then Andor. It might be something else, <laughs> I guess, as well. Yeah, Andor well. amuses me so much. That's just the thing. Like, you know you know who we need a, a TV show sounds for? Sounds like bullshit. Andor. It's like a joke. It's yeah. like, what do you mean? Why is there a show for him? You're like, well, there's also a show for Agatha Harkness. You're like, but why? <sighs> Well, because, like, a lot of people on Twitter like Agatha. Yeah, but <laughs> we're doing this from is. our POV, okay? Like, we don't, right, we don't include like, those yeah. weirdos. That's no fun. Well, I mean, you look at the slate, they're doing a show that's just about zombies now for Marvel. It's zombies. It's like, is this, right. you did an episode of that in What If, so now it's a whole, like, TV show. Is it that easy to just, like, that's just how shows get made now on Disney Plus. Is yeah, people kind of like that, so we'll just do a whole show based on it. Just imagine having that level of power within Marvel where you're like, yeah, I'm okay, you can have that show, you can have what? that show, you can, and, and you're just sitting there as this creative who's like, I get to make a whole TV show? Holy fuck. Well, I think, that's, I think that's the point of Reach, right? Is like, there, there are no ideas that would be dismissed because it seems like no matter what you do, you're going to make money on a Marvel project. It feels like um, Ant-Man was kind of the thing that demonstrated that, but then even continuing into, like, this year, right? All of the stuff has been successful to some degree. Uh, even Eternals, dang. you're like, whoever whoever the chuckle fucks who made Eternals are, they're probably gonna get way more... Eternals is gonna get a sequel for sure, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, it didn't do as well as Shang-Chi, but it probably did well enough to justify it. Um... But yeah. The... Uh, uh, Maybe we'll have that guy on. I have no idea who he is, but sure. Um, of course, Boba can't be ruthless anymore. Sigh. They. Uh, I'm trying to think. They have him hit someone really hard, and, and they make a big deal out of it. It's in the trailer as well. But um, he de he makes a decision fully that he will not kill a, ch a child. So that's interesting. It's not that it's out of character. It's just like that's definitive now. Yeah. It's the thing about characterization, I suppose. If we've got, like, a new person, it's like, when it comes to killing a child, it's like, well, we've got nothing to work with, so what do they do? But, you know, Boba is like, would he kill a child? And you're like, uh... Well, I guess all this tells us is that he has some kind of honor system, you know? Yeah, well, would you have guessed that from what you'd seen of him in the OT? Um... I think that it. I think that it is a fair inference. Um, I don't know that I've been given anything that would indicate that he wouldn't make that choice. That's pretty much where I'm at. I think, it's, and I think we all prefer that because it makes people seem a I little bit more cartoonishly that. evil. You need to save that shit for like the really evil people. Yeah, I, I, I want Boba Fett to have values of some sort. Because after Mando, I, it, it feels like an of course because he's like, he's like really nice in Mando. Um, yeah, it's weird. So, we could have figured that. But, like, yeah, they just, I just find it interesting, I guess. Because, you know, like, they they thought they were allowed to just make Anakin kill children. It's like, no, no. <laughs> it's too late. Don't get him started. Well, people in chat are Don't saying that Eternals lost money, that it needed 500 million to break even. Oh, it'll still get a sequel. The same for I think it'll still get a sequel. It'll be, um, it'll be a situation of just, like, well, it was still kind of like Pandemic Times. Um, but then again, Spider-Man No Way Home is now the highest grossing Spider-Man film uh, of all time. It's been now Quick. Far From Home. It, it's been like, what, two weeks? I think it's actually, it's been two weeks. It's only been two weeks. Man. <laughs> like, that's, yep. that's nuts, isn't it? It was making so much money. Um, Mola, three weeks ago. We've got two episodes of Kingdom left. Mola now. We've got two. That's a lie, because me and Fringy watched it, like, a couple days ago. That's not true. That's a lie. 
He's lying, lying to, to you. you. Um, or am I crazy? You are crazy. We 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 had four left. Now we got two left. Yeah. Uh, you guys should check out some speculative evolution projects. They're neat little science-based exercises in world building and cool aliens. Hi, Rex. Hello. Uh, yeah, sure. I have no idea what that is. Belch. Speculative wanna... evolution. I assume it's like, what if this evolved this way? Yeah. What if we put him in this? Is it like a sim though, or is it? I don't know. Maybe it is just thought experiments. That could, that sounds kind of cool. If it is what, what I think it is. What if we forced a bunch of ducks to live in the desert? What would happen after ten <laughs> <They just die. laughs> thousand years? Nothing, because they're fucking ducks and they die. Or just you fast forward, there's loads of dinosaurs in the desert. You're like, what? How did? Uh, okay. Or what if? What if slowly but surely the the lake turned into a, I don't know, a mountain? How would the ducks just? climb uh, they the probably pyramids. fly honestly is probably what they do because they have wings <laughs> but I don't know I don't know I want rags to make a porn parody better than the original Atla gay avatar gavatar gavatar uh, the last straight bender also high rags uh, I don't want to make porn parodies of things that are like have kids as the protagonists absolutely uh, Fringy, are you comparing Crash Team Racing to Mario Kart 8 on 150cc or 200cc? 200cc takes more skill in dry drifting. <laughs> it changes uh, the mechanics I, a lot. Okay, yeah, no, I, I agree. 200cc is a really valuable addition to Mario Kart. I, uh, 200, 200cc definitely makes uh, Mario Kart 8 more challenging. And I remember when I was uh, going for the three stars, it was definitely harder. Why um, is it CC? I guess what does that mean? I have no idea. Engine power I, for like motors, like motor, a, a lot of motorcycles and stuff. They they don't they're not measured in horsepower. I don't think they're measured in CC, which I don't know oh. what it stands for, but that's like engine power. So like if if you want to buy a scooter or a motorcycle, I think it only like you have to have a certain amount of CCs in order to be street legal, for instance. Um, I see. I just think it's kind of I mean, neat that um, a question for Mario Kart came up. Fringy and I had no idea, and Rags did because of his car knowledge. That's the power oh, yeah. of EFAP yeah. for you. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, to ad to address the point, I I think I I still think that uh, Crash Team Racing has better. Uh, people are saying it's cubic centimeters, uh, the engine volume or oh, cubic okay. capacity, something like that. Um, I think that. Crash Team Racing has stronger core mechanics, um, but I yeah Mario Kart Eight is uh, definitely much more of a challenge and um, a more intense and interesting experience on two hundred CC. It was a really good addition. Uh, I don't think it ever becomes like not challenging because you have to break, you have to use your brakes, which you don't often have to do in Mario Kart. Uh, learned today that 400 million years ago we used to be fish, and birds evolved from dinosaurs, which also used to be fish. So we're all fish, guys. Well, yeah, we're all fish. We're all stardust. Certain, from a certain point of view, everything. Yes. We're all carbon yeah. and other things. No, guys, we're all from the ribs of Adam, the first human. Okay, that's, that's, that's a fair, that's a fair of point dust. of view. I'm just, I'm gonna go with the other stuff. I'm just, yeah, it's fine. Adams sounds like a great guy. Actually, I remember he was, he, was he, he got us in a lot of trouble. Apparently, <laughs> this is it, the, it's our problem now. I was just gonna say, I remember the first time I found out that birds were dinosaurs. It was like, oh my god, blowing my mind. And then when I found out that Velociraptors had feathers, it's like, wow, this is uh. What I'm I watching a dinosaurs. show that um, did a whole bunch of stuff to do with dinosaurs, and then like at the end, they were like, by the way, our understanding of how they look is very different from Jurassic Park, and that these are renditions of what they probably are much more likely to look like. And I was like, yeah, but they're not as cool. <laughs> um, so like, I, uh, I actually got a, I, man, this is funny. I have a tab pulled up, because I remember I was, I watched the Curse Kazakhs video on what dinosaurs actually look like, and I decided to look up a Velociraptor. Like, this is one of the ideas of what a Velociraptor looks like, and I think it looks cool. That's neat. Yeah, I well, so, that... to clarify my cool first, so, like, uh, if we consider Jurassic Park vaguely a horror movie, at least with the villains being 
dinosaurs, I reckon they look way more prepped to be, like, monsters than these renditions uh, do. Yeah, like, I think T-Rex looks awesome in Jurassic uh, Park. Yeah. Like, if well, that's the not what T-Rex they Velociraptors all look do neat. look cool, yes. Uh, but I do like the idea that Velociraptors would look like what they actually look like with the feathers. I, I think they look awesome. I want, Yeah, I want Jurassic Park to have the fucking balls to make dinosaurs look like what they actually look like. I actually think it. the Jurassic World got away with explaining that. Um, to some, like, I, I don't they like that film. It with, yeah, DNA. Of... Well, the, the Wu, I Henry Wu, like literally says, people. like... Yeah. He's annoyed that we've been making these edits to make them look more appealing to an audience as opposed to their true form. Like, they acknowledge in-universe that they've been doing that engineering-wise. They've been removing the feathers to make them look like we expect them to look. Um, mm -hmm. Which is kind of a cool meta thing, in a, in a sense. Yeah, I guess, yeah. I guess, um, I guess the thing that I find interesting in thinking about what dinosaurs really looked like is that there's a lot more variety to them than I think people... I think the general thing of dinosaurs is, oh, they're just like big lizards. Like, that. that's like the broad view of what dinosaurs were. But it seems like there was a lot more variety to what they to what they were. Well, and, the other thing that's face, yeah. partially mind-blowing to a lot of people is like, you know, like the Stegosaurus and the T-Rex. Like, they, didn't they, they together, hanged out, yeah. right? It's like, no, they're like millions of years apart. Well, it's, again, Kurzgesagt's uh, T-Rex, uh, a living T-Rex is closer to us than it was to a live Stegosaurus. That's how far apart they were. Velociraptors, uh, you know, because T-Rex was around until the Meteor, but Velociraptor wasn't. Um, I think Triceratops also. I'm not sure if they lined up. It, yeah, it was 165 million years. That's another thing. Long. Velociraptor and Tyrannosaurus. Right. They're yeah. fucking great names. Stegosaurus I like as well, even though Stegosaurus is like, look at me, I'm just chill and I eat leaves off the trees and I got a long neck. And then yeah. uh, Triceratops, man, cool name for a dinosaur. Carnotaurus. That's, that sounds almost like someone's making it up a little bit more. It's awesome. Such cool names. Dinosaurs are awesome. They are. They're super cool. And I always, I remember, uh, I think there was a question, it's like, what's your favorite dinosaur? And I think I said, like, man, T-Rex, that feels like a, an obvious choice. And I think you said, like, well, yeah, it's an obvious choice, because obviously. So fucking cool. cool. Look at him. He's so powerful. Yeah. Well, I think they had the strongest, theorized to have the strongest bite of any land animal, uh, ever. Which doesn't surprise me. You guys excited yeah, for Jurassic proper. World Dominion? Oh boy, it's, uh, what is it? The, the fourth most anticipated film of the year behind... Black Panther being number one, films. somehow. That one is surprising. Wait, yeah. is Black Panther 2 coming out in 2022? Yes. Oh, the f um, like it sounds like they're not even okay. Well, well, so that's that's the interesting part, right? Is because Marvel be a mess. delayed, probably Marvel delayed their whole slate because uh, Doctor Strange meant to come out in March, and Thor and May, and then so on and so forth. But they pushed everything back like one slot. Um, right. Marvels is now 2023, but I'm pretty sure that's finished shooting. But like Black Panther hasn't. Just feels weird to me. It's like you're telling me that the film that's already done is gonna come kind of out after the film that hasn't been finished yet. <laughs> then again, Doctor Strange, they did reshoots, what, like four months before it's coming out? That movie, man. <laughs> I'm so lucky they've I got Benedict Cumberbatch, who seems to be, I don't mean this in a bad way, like willing to just do anything, like for the, the MCU. Well, because he keeps showing up. He's, like, yeah, he's he been just. In yeah. He's in loads of them, and it's just like, they're lucky they don't have like a Robert Downey Jr. who's like, you've got three more appearances and I'm out. Yeah. Because I, I mean, but they're lucky that they have him, because without him, if it were like a lesser actor, yeah, there'd be a lot less to latch onto, because he really makes that character. Him. I like seeing him. Well, yeah, I think character. everyone agrees it's a good cast. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. I enjoy well, him playing that role. I just don't care about the character anymore. Yeah. Maybe they can try and claw it, it back. It's getting but... real hard to listen to him talk about people being dangerous with magic, you know? Yeah. It's like, shut up. <laughs> but, uh... I mean, Marvel doesn't really do, like, bad casting. It doesn't seem like. They usually get good people Mark or Ruffalo the right people. Hulk. Well, it? yeah, I... Yeah, but he's not bad in the role. It's just Edward Norton would have fought harder. For the There's so few highlights of Mark Ruffalo as Hulk. Like, well, a lot of them are from Avengers. 
Well, and Ragnarok, but the, th the thing with Ragnarok yeah. is that it's more of a fun thing. It's like... Right, as opposed to Avengers where it was a character that were trying to do something with him. Well, it is easier to get good casting than to have good writing, I guess. Well, because, you know, I think we all kind of have an agreement of, like, what good and bad acting is, whereas writing is still in that wishy-washy area. Yeah, um, that's an interesting thought, isn't it? We all seem to mostly agree on what good and bad acting is. Um, well, I think, I think yeah. it is just the standard thing of bad art, bad acting, bad music... There's just like yeah. a visceral gut. Ugh. I'd say bad, bad singing writing. in particular, I think, is really you know. It, it's cringe. Bad you know? like it's, it's actually singing. singing. Oh yeah, that yeah. Being out of it's tune is cringe. one of the most like definitive sort of. You ain't arguing that's, out of that that's one. That's objective, yeah. Well, well, I think that's that's the idea, right? With those things, it's just immediately obvious to people that something is wrong. Writing is a little bit harder, I think, because it's it's more abstract. Yeah, because everybody's got different it's ideas like, on what it even means to have good or bad writing. Meanwhile, out of tune is just universal. Exactly. Who the fuck we're, argues we're good singing is out of tune? It's like, what? I guess somebody could try, but, like, nobody will take that seriously. Well, the best I think you'll even get is just going to be when it's deliberate, and you'll be like, right, yeah, I know, but that's bad singing yeah. deliberately. Unless you had, like, somebody who was super into music theory who could, you know, explain it, but even then... Yeah. I don't know that any explanation is going to help, right? People will be like, okay, I get it, but it's very unappealing. Um, yeah, writing's a bit different. Um, Fringy, what is your opinion on unlockable characters in fighting games that are insanely powerful that are always banned in tournaments? Um, so, like, I'm not super well-versed in fighting games, so anything that I pull from this is going to be Smash, but I guess I'm thinking, like, Meta... Well, Meta Knight wasn't unlockable, but Meta Knight, from what I understand, is, like, banned at many, 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 uh, Smash Brothers brawl tournaments. Wait, was he... He was, just... he was unlocked at the base, was he? He... Meta Knight was base character, okay. and, um, he was, like, categorically the best character in brawl. Like, unequivocally the best character in that game. He had the best recovery, he had, like, the fastest attacks, um, he was, he was basically, like, there was, Meta there was Knight. no character that could beat him, uh, like, all the time. Like, when you talk about matchups where it's like, oh, this character, you know, they're good against these characters, they're not so good against this character, like, Meta Knight was good in every single encounter, so he's banned. Uh, I think Bayonetta was banned as well, um, in, in Smash 4. I guess she's hey, unlockable in that she's DLC. Um... Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know enough about fighting games, and especially fighting game tournaments. Just to clarify, when you say... You know when you build the game, and then you have like eight characters or something? Do, do, is that how that works in Brawl? So, no Brawl had more that... So, in Ultimate, you start with the original eight uh, characters. You actually start with just eight, but you unlock new ones very quickly. Right, and, uh, and then you build it all the way up to like seventy-five. But like Meta Knight characters. was already unlocked when you boot the game up. Yes, Meta Knight is one of the base characters. You don't unlock Meta Knight. Interesting. Um. Um. Do, do, do. If you can replace the blue shell with an equally powerful item that feels way less shitty to be hit by, what would you design? Hmm. I think. Maybe the problem with the I blue think, shell is that it needs to give you a chance to avoid it. Well, Mario Kart 8 has the, um... It has a special item called, like, the Super Horn, where if you use it at the right time, it destroys any items coming to you, including blue shells. I get the purpose of the blue shell, but it I is... I think it's meant to feel bad. I, I yeah, think it's, it's literally meant to be like, oh, you're winning? Well, we need to keep things, like, mixed up so that you just don't get to win. Well, so, an like interesting that, you know? thing is, um, I've, I've watched some videos where it's like Mario Kart Wii tournaments that just seem to be going on, and, uh, in that game, if you time the boost with a, with a mushroom correctly, you can dodge, um, a, a blue shell. Like, if you time it right, which is really uh -huh. cool. I don't think that was on purpose, but that's, that's I was like about to say, a really I wonder cool if that was element. intentional. Yeah, I don't think it is. I think the design element of the blue shell is... It really is just as simple as yeah. we need to we need to put limits on the person who's in front. Yeah, you get punished for playing well, which isn't always a great uh, thing mechanically. Um, I, I now I'm thinking about Crash Team Racing again. Crash Team Racing had an interesting mechanic where um, 
there were different power levels to weapons depending on how much Wampa Fruit you'd acquired. So if you had less than 10, you got a less powerful version. And if you had 10, you'd get a super duper one. And um, the, the super blue shell. Wampa Fruit? No, 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 like super duper items. Um, oh, okay. And so, for instance, there was a, there's like an electric thing that flies through the map and, um, and like zaps the person in first place. And when it's not powered up, if you're in the way, it'll get you, but, it, but that's it. Whereas if you've super powered it up, it will target every single person on the map. Like it, it will just track every single one and take them out. Um, that feels like a cool element that just makes Crash Team Racing a little bit more unique. I mean, maybe an item that... That like maybe it just slows you down a little bit, or it applies a, a debuff for a little while. Well, if if we need to have some kind of an item that fulfills that purpose, well, that's lightning, um, right? Lightning has a debuff. It doesn't totally knock the wind actually, out. Yeah, I like lightning. Um, yeah, like when tiered. I get hit by lightning, I'm like, oh, I still get to like play the game. Mm -hmm. Maybe know? it's like I mean, it, it should blood. explode around first place, and it should like you know hit the floor with all kinds of craters of blue. And if you hit any of them, it slows you, and you have to dodge the fuck out of them. And it's really hard. Um, or it applies some kind of artificial difficulty and like you know the the little squid that splurts on the screen and it's in it inks the screen. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Um like that in the sense of it doesn't change anything mechanically, but it applies like it, it makes something more difficult for the player specifically without yeah, affecting that's a good the one. game itself. So it's like if one. you're good, you know, maybe you can or and if you're very well. familiar with the map. The blooper does change mechanics. It makes uh, it makes your drifts a little bit wider because it's like slippery. Oh, okay. I didn't it know that. I thought, it was, just, I thought, I thought it was just. I thought it was visual, um, yeah. visual effect on the. In screen. Mario Kart Eight, it isn't it isn't just visual? Uh, at least I know that much. I can't remember what it was in Wii and DS. Um, I mean, I I guess because I know people who who love that like the blue shell is such a um damaging weapon in terms of. Because, like, the big thing is there's different types of hits in Mario Kart. There's, like, there's the standard hit where it's like, oh, no. But then you've got, like, the ultra dupe, super duper hit that sends you flying you fly into the up air. into it's the like, air, yeah. 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 Ma and Mario Kart 8 actually dials that down significantly. The amount of, the amount that you're, you're, uh, slowed down. Like, it's way less. Okay. And, um, I know people who would hate that. Who, like, loved that it was such a damaging thing that just totally knocked the wind out of you. Yeah, I, got, I, I just don't. got hit by it then, and I just looked at the map, and I was like, there's enough space between me and second place that I still win now. But if it were like oh. a, you know, everything in front of you is about to become incredibly difficult to navigate, and if you fail it, it'll slow you down significantly, that just that would just feel much more engaging. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. Um, but maybe it's an aspect of uh, the simpler you keep it, the more universal, like, people, you know, like, because a lot of kids are going to be playing Mario Kart, it's like, yeah, Blue Shell just it hurts you big time. That's really easy to communicate. That's going to be complicated for children, is it? Like, things just get more um, complicated when you're hit with a blue shell? So, I think it's the idea of, um... I guess you could give it a try and see how it works, but I think there's no denying that it's simpler of just, it hits you and you, you go flying, as opposed to, it hits Certainly around simpler. you and now you've got... Yeah, I ain't denying it's simpler, I just don't see why we would opt for simpler. Um, oh, oh no, I'm just saying that might be the reason why they've made that decision. Is, is trying to take that into account. I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'd be worth giving a shot, your idea. Well, that answers the super chat. <laughs> they were yeah. asking for oh, mechanics. You there you worth. go. Um, yeah, because it's just, uh, I think, anybody and everybody, when in first place and then they lose because of a blue shell, they just don't feel like it was it was anything they could have done anyway. Yeah, it doesn't feel uh, fair. doesn't feel... But mm. the horn feels like a cool addition where it's like you can hold on to this you know and you you can use it earlier on or do you want to wait for that blue shell if you yeah, want yeah. to first place do you want to do you want to hit the you know, do you want to accept the red shell so that you can have that you know saved for the blue and it's also keeping in mind nice that uh someone could get a boo and steal that blue uh steal that horn so you don't want to hold on to it forever this this actually reminds me of a Oddly enough, this reminds me of a similar mechanic in Battlefield 5. Um, okay. Hmm. So, because Battlefield 5 is an excellent game, you have to play it. Uh, but in typical Battlefield games, as in many games, uh, if you get damaged, you go a certain amount of time without taking damage or without being suppressed, and your health will regenerate slowly but surely to full. Um, 
However, in Battlefield 5, uh, all of the non-medic characters can carry bandages, uh, a, a one bandage, essentially. And whenever you take damage, whenever you like, you can press, you know, C or whatever button you have um, uh, bound to it, and you will consume your bandage, and it will instantly begin healing you up back to full, right? So if you, if you get hit by a sniper, and you're running around with 45 health or 40 health or whatever, you can press C immediately if you want to, and you will start healing all the way to full. However, if you don't use your bandage, your character will only heal up to certain, like, increments. So okay. you can also be, and it'll tell you how much. So, it like, you get you take some damage, and you're in a safe spot now. Your health bar will show you will start healing, and you'll only go to, like, 80, right? Or 75, something like that. Mm -hmm. And you can you can use your bandage and you could instantly start healing up to full, but you'll consume that one bandage and you'll have to get more. Either medics will have to give it to you or you'll have to resupply at a medic station. Um, or you can keep going, except that you have 80 health, but still hold on to that bandage for when you feel you really need it. That's an idea that I think yeah, yeah. is kind of cool, yeah. Well, someone in chat mentioned like the bullet bill seems like a way cooler high level item. And I agree as well. Oh, I quite like awesome. it. Yeah. Star's a good one. Well, I like you know like Bowser's ability. shell. I find that to be really cool. Um, the big one that bounces around. Like yeah, if you see, see that around the map and you can see where it's bouncing, and so you can account for it. But it also is just so grand. Like it affects. It's such a thing you can't miss it. So it's just like oh, it's, it feels like a good variable. The special I... item thing in Double Dash was a good idea. I should try it again. Is there a is there a mechanic in Mario Kart where you can look behind you? Yes. Oh my god, friend, okay. you have to see that. You that's that's fucking clip worthy. Yeah, that is uh that's just that's yeah, that's your standard. Hey, you're playing Mario Kart, all right? <laughs> it's that bridge. That bridge is the bane it, of uh The idea that all that just happened on that bridge as well, that's fucking nuts. The best part is that it just knocks you off the last one. It's like, alright, yep. see ya. <laughs> well, to be fair, I was about to be like, wow, I should... Oh no! Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> pain. Oh. Will I pull back first place before we hit the end, though? I doubt it, but maybe. <laughs> um, if you can... Re oh wait, yeah. EVAP, which would you prefer or rather be locked in a room with for a month? Atla, Star Wars Rebels, or Star Wars Resistance? Also, oh wait, we'll we'll read the second one in a sec. So, all right. So say that. So locked in a room with? Or... Yes. We, we I assume the shot. idea is just we'll be kept alive, but we have one piece of media to be entertained by. I'm going with Rebels instantly. I haven't seen it. Uh, it'll be at least a little bit useful to my analysis in future because a lot of people are aware of it, and I ain't fucking touching Star Wars Resistance. That shit looked terrible. I think I'd make the same choice. Uh, no, I haven't seen Atlo in full, so I actually I'd probably watch Atlo. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. I think I might go with Rebels as well. I would argue I it's going to be more I'm useful. I think I'm most curious about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I do well, think I'm point in the fact that it could be more useful. It might be more useful to me to be more aware of uh, of Atlo as a show because of how much people talk about it. <laughs> Get you in loads of trouble if you watched it though. I already know how well, you'd feel about it, so much. To... Hell yeah, because you, well, you, you, your well, opinion's not gonna be very high of it. Yeah, but I don't have to tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I keep that one to myself. <laughs> they take criticism so well. Um, well, it's it's okay though because if you know, to keep it to myself. It's just like, what'd you think? Oh, I I had a fun. Mo you, I I had a month in there, you know. I had a I had a month. It's like, what'd you think? <laughs> oh, you know, it was an interesting test of my, uh, yeah. of me being in a Specifically, the writing, hmm. what did you think? And you're like, I enjoyed the parts of the show. Yeah, I it, enjoyed it's, certain parts. It's a cool parts. idea, you know? Yeah, there is, is certain is art that idea. I like. And the second question was, also, Moller and Fringy, how do you celebrate New Year's without guns and fireworks? Uh. Yeah, how um, the fuck I mean, do you do that? Oh. We got fireworks here. I don't know that like people. Like, well, maybe use... they're not considered fireworks compared to Americans who have like nukes. Or is it the idea in America <laughs> can you just like buy fireworks and put them in like your your what, backyard and just light them up? Uh, yeah, I think I think it's like technically you're not supposed to, but it's also like well, I think technically you're not supposed to here either. But sometimes I hear fireworks. You know? Oh yeah, people <laughs> do it here. We definitely um, do yeah. fireworks here. Yeah. 
Um, we've had, um, yeah, I've, I've spent 4th of July's at other people's places, and we've just, like, gotten a whole bunch of different things and just been setting them off in the street and everything. And, like, cops might show up, and it's like, well, they got a noise complaint, and you have to stop. And we're like, and, they, like, they don't like telling you because... You know, because they're like, yeah, it's Fourth of July, but you know, technically we got like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, yeah, know, I mean, you but, can just do whatever you fucking want because everyone knows I mean, it's Fourth of July and they're celebrating too. This is an interesting comment, though. I mean, have people seen like the Sydney New Year's like fireworks display? It's like crazy. There are a lot of fireworks at like at the Sydney. Um, well, the New Year's like, fireworks New Year's uh, in London are insane. They're they're oftentimes yeah. just straight up art pieces. Like the amount of work. Oh yeah. Time. Definitely here, like, the, the Sydney one is, like, 15 minutes long a lot of the time, and it's, like, this massive pyrotechnics display. It's it's insane. Um, but I guess nobody's shooting guns into the air, but <laughs> you're not meant to be doing that, right? Like, that's... gets you in trouble. This ain't the Wild West. Um... Cerebus... Whoa. Um... Sorry, Cerberus Games... Arms has lambasted Mando, and the Boba trailers, even when everyone in his uh, circle was praising it. That's mainly why I recommended him. Oh yeah, that, that makes a lot more sense then. Praising uh, men? Oh yeah. Um, remember yeah, man, everyone, I, if, we thought it was shit the whole time. I feel like Boba Fett definitely. is going to be the one that everyone is like, this is this is actually shit. And it's like, no. Yeah. Mando season we 1 and 2 Mando were shit too. Fast. And it's the same thing. Because uh, the Looks sentiment like the on right? Disney's shows are souring hardcore. Like, it's starting to sour. I'm starting to see like a lot of normies just be like, those Marvel shows, you know, like they. Well, like, Cosmonaut is it? <laughs> put out a tweet saying he hasn't seen Boba Fett yet. Uh, doesn't really want to. Is it bad? And I'm just like, damn. Like, the, there's not even hype enough to just be like, everyone watch Boba Fett show. Ooh. Boba Fett. You were praising Mando. Oh come on. Like well, if you like look the first back couple on episodes. like the first like the first episode we praised the first time we watched it and then the yeah. second episode we were like yeah it's still uh, it's still good and the third episode we're like uh oh and then the fourth episode is like oh we're done yeah we're done yeah. and then we're done. It's then we rewatched it and then we hated everything so we 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 course corrected pretty goddamn fast. Um, and yeah, a lot of our praise for episode one as well was because we thought they were going to pull through in a lot of different things. Well, we didn't we didn't yeah. know what the formula was yet. Because like you know, um, like just seeing the rusted armor of the stormtroopers, like that's really neat. That doesn't that's not anything in the show really. Like, yeah, they they don't do anything with it. That that's totally not something they do anything with. Because then they Absolutely introduce all the other whatever. clean as fuck stormtroopers, and you're like, wait, what? That are down the street, and you're like, wait, what? And then, <laughs> then they kill literally. all of their friends. Like, oh god. That's why I said episodes one and two. That's still disingenuous. Shut up. You know for a fact that we fucking ripped that show apart to the point where uh... I hate. You have no clue. Like this person has no idea. Like my script notes on episodes one and two yeah. are anal well, in how bad like, they are. I feel like you're just forgetting. When we entered into season two, people were really upset with how like we're upset with this season one. That show. Well, I guess what I'm saying is like you understand that like the general consensus was that. People like season one, and so people watched our season two, episode one coverage, and they're like, "Oh my god! Like these guys hate us! Like why do you? What do you think that's indicative of? That it wasn't just the accepted take that Mando was bad. I came around later. Yeah, <laughs> uh, for a brief we, we, we got in loads time, of trouble for season episode. one yeah. on the stream. Um, I yeah, remember the, the I shocking remember. moment where Shad was like, "I agree, three out of ten. People were like, "Wait, what? Yeah, uh, the bamboozled." Yeah, because I think they thought he was more so like it thought the right. I think because he ended up saying like he just he ended up liking more so just the the, the vibe and the look. Mm -hmm. Um, but it gets really hard to defend that show. And then yeah, we pissed off everybody up until episode four or five for season two, and then the crowd came around. Well, it's kind of like with uh, the boys, right? Where it was up until what episode seven was when people were like, oh, it's bad now. It's like mm. always was. Always was. Well, not always. always season was. one had merits. Oh yeah, I meant season um, two. Yeah, season two. I don't know, you just... I, I hate that feeling of just like, you start off a show, it's like, oh, no. <laughs> like, once you reach that point, where like, the good faith just starts to like, whittle away. Just like, oh, 
Yeah, uh, go look at Drinker's comment section for him showing our clip for the Mando Season 2. Uh, holy shit, we pissed off everybody in his audience. They were like, did EFAP enjoy anything? Nope. It always feels real awkward when they're like that. I mean, it's just bad. It's just a bad show. Nothing really works in it. It it gets some aesthetic stuff right, and it yeah. looks fairly well. You know, it looks well produced in terms of its budget, but there's just no characters. The plots are nonsense. It's one of the most insane instances of plot armor consistently I've ever seen in my life. Um, it's just it's just a really bad show. It it's it wastes a lot of time. It wastes a lot of potential. This is not. It's not a good show. And Boba Fett's squaring up to be the exact same shit. Yeah, it's huge Mandalorian vibes from it. Uh, you like the reveal Fennec also has knee rockets? Like, yeah. Does she? I th Wait, was it Fennec or was it his? I thought it was his. Well, I mean, obviously this person is acknowledging she also has them. I, I don't, you say oh, reveal, well, like... I think it was the dressing shot, actually. I think, yeah, she did have new rockets. They weren't both. Oh, actually. I thought that was... Oh, I didn't know they were both simultaneously getting... That's pretty funny. Good yeah. luck with them new rockets. <laughs> didn't use them in the fight, by the way. Good luck, no, but I... yeah. The, yeah. I don't think... I, I think in, there was not a single blaster shot fired in the first episode, which is very convenient for our protagonists. Well, I think you're right. We've got to... And I do this every time, and we've got to do it, because it's our job. Maybe there will be context as to why they weren't using blasters in future. Maybe, Maybe we still don't know why they were doing it. So well, that's because um, the fast blade is stopped by the shield, um, and <laughs> if they shoot blasters at each other, the shields will create a nuclear explosion uh, that will destroy all of Mos Espa or wherever they are. Well, it uh, won't be though. It's uh, it's it's a video idea I've been tossing around in my head. Like the issue of uh, like a video about how guns are just an issue in media that you have to account for, and if yeah. you don't, then like you have world building issues. Like I'm just saying, but I've I've never seen, never more so in Star Wars. I think uh, have I has there been a conspicuous lack? He of has blasters? a pistol it's on his holster, and he just doesn't use it for the whole fight. Except he does use yeah. a rocket at one point. <laughs> uh, yeah, to one guy is just an easy pot shot, and he uses a wrist launcher is funny bomb and I'm like what do you and then he just yeah it's funny how he just disappears it's like playing a video game and you have it set to where there are no bodies so once an enemy dies they just disappear yeah Mando or uh, Boba Fett's trying to squeeze out those frames you know Star Wars 3 said he loved Boba Fett episode 1 I'm not surprised um I'm sure he is I'm sure the flashback to young Boba Fett and him breaking out of the Sarlacc is enough for fans to go fucking nuts I think those two things alone would just be like, ah, this is so good. Watch those wrist rockets. 69 for 69 guy. Hate, get that, haha, -ha, get the reference. Yeah. Mm, Squid Game no. wasn't that long ago. Very oh. funny. Very, 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 very funny. Do you think uh, there were arguments between the... The fish that crawled out of the ocean and stayed out, and the fish that crawled out but then decided to go back. Yeah, probably. He's like, the water's pretty cool. Why do you have to go on land? What's that about? It's nice in there. It's nice in the cool yeah. little water. You can't spend your whole life in the ocean. And they're like, yeah, you can if you have gills. And they're like, that's not what we meant. And then they get into an <laughs> argument and a big discussion. And eventually they're like, you know what? You're just afraid of, afraid of change, Jerry. And he's like, you don't know me, man. You think you do, but... I'm not here because I'm some kind of hermit. I'm here because it's the right decision to make. The shield fight showed the attackers did not use their weapon. No one knew how to use. No one knew what weapons were. <laughs> no one knew what the fuck was happening. Every no one in that. Instead, a bunch of green cavemen had to come up with swords, and you're just like, <laughs> what the hell is happening here? Oh, that fight scene was so terrible. I just like it's you have this sliver of hope where you're like, well, this time around they'll make good fight scenes, right? No, nope. yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> Giving him any benefit of the, the fights doubt. Fights are terrible in everything. They're really Disney bad. Hasn't had what a good happened? Fight scene in like twenty years. Do not know what happened. Well, yeah, because the choreographers still exist, right? They're still. I thought you could just yeah, pay them and then they do their job. I didn't realize that it's gotten this bad. 
Maybe it's like they found a way to, like, one time someone was like, let's do our own choreography, we don't need a choreographer. And then they did it, and people loved it, and they were like, oh, this is way cheaper. Just do well, maybe they just discovered you don't need a degree to be a choreographer, so they can just say you're the choreographer, and that's that. Like you, Jerry. What? Get off that camera, you're the choreographer now. Make cool things like dancing? happen. dancing? Yeah, sure. Unreal, and I feel like we're gonna get a whole season of it. And I guess people are entertained by it, you know? I guess people are entertained by this just shit combat where it's just flailing and nobody doing anything real, even approaching intelligent or skillful. No one uses their equipment. No one uses good tactics. People just, it. I guess people just love it because it's action. It's things, things on screen. Look at them moving around. Look at them go. Hey, Fringy, do you like these facial expressions of the two bananas? Yeah, one of them's like a little hee 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 cheeky, and then the other one's like, oh, I'm tired. I'm he's seen a lot, you know. The other one, he's like, this, so, uh, yeah. I don't like being used to attack people. Stare. This isn't nice. This isn't my existence to be driven over and die. Just to make someone else's life a little bit harder for your benefit. What you're doing here is unethical. Do take a good hard look at yourself. He should make a political uh, YouTube channel where he does streams. Everything's Do off. Do better, I, I Senator. <laughs> Do better. Now you'll excuse me, I need to banana peel my way out of here. And then he just flops away. Yeah, every once in a like while, a banana peel he delivers like banana jokes that never land but he just keeps going <laughs> he just keeps he doesn't care he's 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 seen it all like explain something really tragic like a horrible thing that happened to his people and how he needs to correct it and then he goes the whole situation isn't very appealing and looks at the <laughs> camera like with a smile but no one laughs yeah. <laughs> so like inappropriate <laughs> but the smile with still the stern face just little grin <laughs> yeah but i'm trying something new Make some jokes. I'm trying to put a smile on this face, and it's, it's going okay so far. Uh, knee rocket, 69. Firing a rocket point blank into a shield is tight. Yeah, that was really fucking stupid, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. God damn. I hate seeing him do stuff like that. It's like, Boba, you're supposed to be really good. The fuck? How have you lived this long? I don't believe it. I don't believe that you've lived this long. It's like Mando. I don't believe that you've lived this long. Like, so, statistically, it is just... It is not... It is not possible for you to still be alive. It's the nature of his death I find interesting. A lot of people are like... Uh, how dumb of him. When there's nothing he could do if his jetpack is fucking malfunctioning, right? The stupid part is him flying over to them to have instant direct contact when he's using a gun. Like, why would you do that? That's stupid. From Return of the Jedi, I mean. This is the thing. I want to see him doing less stupid stuff, and more smart stuff. That would be great. God, like, when they... They all surround him with the shields. Those, like, a, that's like a perfect opportunity for him to even, like, smirk and then just fly up and be like, You fucking idiots, I've got a jetpack. But no, he just forgets, much like Mando does. I love the fact that they're like, look how cool the jetpack is, you guys like that. Uh, just don't realize it's there when we when it gets in the way, okay? Could be a, it could be an issue to the scene that we want to happen if you have that jetpack on and you use it. So instead you'll have it on and you won't use it. It's ha! It's a fucking are not we clever? An agency multiplier. And you have to account for it, just like guns. All tools. Hey. Those are some pretty ones that stand out in particular because I know what when guns do. I know fly. what a jetpack does. The ability to fly, that sounds really useful. Yep. Uh, one space VO project is Serena World of Birds, where finches on transformed moon evolve into eventing from T Rex. Elegance to tentacle monsters, it's crazy. Um, I feel like Sounds that could have been written better, <laughs> but I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I think so. Sounds neat. 
Jurassic Park Velociraptors are more the size of a Utah Raptor than the actual vo Velociraptors. Also, Utah Raptors yeah, tend to be in Paris instead of... Uh, sorry, pairs instead of packs. Yeah, well, they're about the size of... They're closer to the size of Utah Raptors. Close to the size of Utah? Pretty big raptor. But Utah I'm on raptor. board with them making that movie. Uh... Let's see. That that height was. It says the height at the hips, which is like how you measure dinosaurs, I guess. Like how you measure shoulders at the horse. Fuck, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, they you have their height is between five point nine and six point six feet at the hips. Pretty big. That's yeah, damn it's pretty, big. It's pretty big. Yeah, it's pretty big. That's at the hip, yeah. And when you consider how long it will be, like dang, something's that six feet tall and that long. Ooh, I don't want to mess with that. Measured in hands? Yeah, horses are measured in hands tall. I don't know how tall a dinosaur, what what body part they're measured in. Maybe they're measured in, like, I don't know. Yes. Well, yeah, someone, someone in chat's like, because the writers forgot, and no one else on set is in position to do something about it, were capable of critical thinking enough to notice, just like Wonder Woman 84 and Mr. Handsome. But it's like, correct. You seem very passionate. <laughs> <laughs> you seem very passionate. You're never gonna get a job at Disney. Yeah, they don't want that shit. They want to crush it right out. They want to. They just want to get an assembly you, line that action scene. We gotta scene. deliver it. We gotta get it to our subscribers. That's I, I think it's almost like gonna be probably a video topic at some stage. Just like we don't we don't do art anymore. It's it's content. We gotta deliver it to our subscribers. We need subscriber growth on the platform for the fourth quarter of the fiscal year. That's you know, where like, we're at. Don't you care about what? You know, like no. Well, I I have like an idea. <laughs> have you considered <laughs> not? And then he gets dragged out of the office by the bodyguards, tossed him out the window. <laughs> uh. That meme of those people punching the guy while laughing. Yeah. Uh, favorite mainline Mario game? Galaxy. Probably uh, Galaxy, yeah. Well, then again, so people be like, isn't it Sunshine? It's like, I mean, kinda. It's close. It's it's definitely got a big old place in my heart, that game, because I played that a fuck ton when I was a kid, and a fuck ton when I was an adult. Sunshine you guys may makes have color wet. You could say that. Uh, it's just a fucking vibe, that game. I absolutely adore the Delfino, and mm -hmm. it's so chill. It's so vacation-y. Uh, that's, oddly enough, it's that's chill. one of the reasons that I kind of like the first part of Dead Island. Was that the, that was the, the zombie game yeah. on the uh, Dead Island? Um, I like the first part of it because it was like a resort. And it had this really cool vibe to it with all the sand and the the bungalows and the like resort feel to it. I thought that was a really neat atmosphere. Cool. Obviously, it's a little bit reverse in a way with Sunshine because you come to the place where it's already splooged in muck and you clean it all up but and it ends up being nice. You sort of I will say, uh, you sort of do that in Dead Island where you you arrive and it's splooged up in muck but in a different way and then it's splooged up in muck in another kind of way and you have to clean it out mm -hmm. one zombie at a time with paddles and oars um i i think that 3d world has a really chill vibe as well very happy and uh like comfortable it's a nice comfy fun game But, uh, Galaxies, yeah, that's, uh, that's got a special place. Yeah. Love that game. Um, uh, I'm currently catching up with all of the EFAPs and question my sanity whenever you guys have someone like Major Leon. Hey. It's important to have people who disagree, right, chat? <laughs> so it was just like, yeah, but not him. <laughs> Uh, speaking of awful shows, can you tear Wheel of Time apart with Shad sometime? I'm sorry, we're probably not going to watch that. I don't care about Wheel of Time. I just don't care about Wheel of Time show. at all. It was hard enough to get these guys to watch Boba Fett. <laughs> it really was. It was. I wasn't that interested. 
I don't know why, but I, I, I actually am, and I, I just think it's because I, I know so much about it, why it was made and where it sits, that I just have so much I we can talk about storytelling-wise. Like, I don't actually have any investment in the idea of, like, I can't wait to see what they do with him and, and where he's going to end up by the finale. It's like, no, I have no faith in that. Yeah, I just Yeah, because it's all going to be shit. I'm more interested in just whatever decisions they make, we have lots to talk about. And we'll have all the cards. We don't need any context additionally to what we've got. Uh, you think Star Wars Theory cried when he saw Boba? I... Cried when know. he saw the Sarlacc. The inside of the Sarlacc. <laughs> all the fleshy goo and the bipping sounds or whatever, just like, oh man. It's so long. Irax, do you have a preferred consistency? Um... Hmm... Probably what you'd expect, I suppose. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. Would you play a Last of Us type game set in the Bronze slash Stone Age? Oh, why not? That could be cool. Yeah. Dude, there's, there's no genre or concept that I'm like I don't I, I would want to check out if it's just well done. Like, do you want to see a guy who just works in a library for a two-hour movie? It's like, well, I guess it it could be good. What is it? How does that work? Could be cool. Yeah. It's like, that sounds boring though, there's no dragons. It's like, that's okay. Okay. Uh, howdy, Mublo. I got Jurassic World Evolution 2 recently and have been having a good old time with it. What's your thoughts on it? Also, hi, Frags. Hello! I think that applies to both of you. Frags, right? I don't know. Oh, maybe. Frags? Yeah. Um, I only played cool. half the tutorial <laughs> because... I'm behind on my gaming, uh, the, obviously the funny thing being, like, Dead by Daylight is my current, I have brain dead games that I just, they, they all cycle through, Halo Infinite was the last one, it was just cycled out, it just wasn't interesting enough to me, uh, the one before that I think was, sometimes I dip back and forth in Killing Floor, because just blowing up things in that is satisfying, um, yeah, that's a good one, what else did I, Oh yeah, Factorio was one. Like, there's lots of these games where I just sort of play them when I've done too much editing or whatever else, and I'm like, I need to do something else. Well, yeah, because you've got, like, concentrate games, which are, like, new experiences, single-player yeah. you know, things, and then chill games. City Skylines was that for a bit for me. I, I like that game. I mean, all the Dolphin Very... games I'm playing essentially count as that, because I just know them so well that I... I'm mm -hmm. more so concentrating on the conversation, but it's just a nice background for people who are Tetris. watching it. Tetris is an easy one for that too. Mm -hmm. Mario Kart 8. I guess I'm saying any game can act as that if you know it well enough. Uh, at least for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah, I like just... it's weird to think that I could play, like Resident Evil 4 could be one of those games for me just because yeah. of how familiar I am with it and how much I've played it. I did a lot that of Dark Souls. Of course. Dark Souls is like yeah. a chill out game for me. It's like, how the fuck? And it's like, well, I just know it that well, so. You play Dead by Daylight, what killer? My main killer's Hillbilly, and then Ghostface. Um, but I mean, I'm trying to check out a whole bunch right now. I was just recently trying out Death Slinger. He's pretty cool. He fires like a spear into people and re reels them in. Um, and they get little like things they gotta press to try and avoid him. And if you can drag it into obstacles, it can break the chain and stuff. This, this is cool stuff they do in that game. I'm really surprised it's made it this long. It came out in like 2015, I think. And it seems so niche, but uh, apparently it's got an audience. Uh... Predictions on which is worse, Amazon's Lord of the Rings prequel show or Game of Thrones prequel show? I'm gonna go with Lord of the Rings. Probably. I feel like that's gonna annoy the fuck out of everybody. We'll see though. When is that now? Do we have a, do we have a date for that? I don't think we do. I think I think it's like 2023. I think is when it's coming out. Or... Oh shit! Okay, that's another. That's nice. It's a whole year of not having to deal with that. Yeah. Um. Uh, do, do, we? Oh yeah. So Jurassic World Evolution. I just got not much to say on it, unfortunately. But it seems pretty fine from from everything I've seen. I haven't seen many people complain about it. But I don't know that it's different. Enough from the first one that it's getting much uh, praise or 
like word of mouth advertising, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it'll be the last one now. But I imagine I would have thought they'd want to coincide that with releasing Dominion. Or I guess maybe Dominion will act as a time where they can release a DLC. I don't know. Hopefully they bring in the gun that can send dinosaurs after people. Really great little addition to the lore. Uh, what's y'all's favorite dinosaurs? One carnivore, one herbivore. Also hi Ragu, Fringu, and Morlu. Hello. Hi. Hello. I do um, like Stegosaurus as a herbivore one. Well, uh, my carnival is going to be T-Rex. No. Mine's probably also going to be T-Rex. I like I like those Velociraptors because they seem like clever, you know. They have that pack mentality of uh, hunting and flanking that sort of thing. And this is yeah. based off my extremely casual understanding of anything dinosaur related, which is essentially some Jurassic Park movies. Um, but I like the uh, I like the triceratops as the yeah. herbivore because they would that that gnarly bone headed plate they have at the front and the spike sticking out of it like what a gnarly creature you know that, I just think that's really cool um I don't know who I'd pick for herbivores I'd have to go through like a list and think about which ones like appeal to me more uh It's just like, wouldn't it be Brachiosaurus for the long? It's like, yeah. I like Stegosaurus. They're just. They, well, they Stegosaurus like, Triceratops uh... would be my like. The Wait, ones sorry, I know. am I? I'm 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 mixing them up. Sorry, I'm I. God, Stegosaurus. Damn, I, I'm they a... have the the spiky tail, right? Yeah. No, they have yeah. the plates. Yeah, the yeah, they have the, yeah, lots they of got plates, the plates along, along the back and the spiky tail. The long-necked one. What is that one called? There's a couple. Bron Brachiosaurus? Bronchiosaurus? Or Brachios Brontosaurus? Yeah. I think it's a Bronchiosaurus or something like that. I like them. Alright, well, Wait, I'll take what, Stegosaurus oh, okay, then. Stegosaurus <laughs> was her before. I actually do like... Nah, you know, it's... Hmm, They're cool. Hold on. Bronch... Let me... Is it Brachiosaurus? Oh, damn it. Brachiosaurus, that might be right. Or is it Brontosaurus? Oh, I think they, those might both be right. Uh... Uh, yeah, no, I like Brontosaurus. They're, they're cool. <laughs> oh, sorry. Let me. I'm just gonna show you this picture, uh, because I was just looking up. I just typed in dinosaurs and was scrolling through the pictures that they showed, and that was just a segment of it, and it just made me laugh. Irish elk. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, it's fair enough. <laughs> the elk is a dinosaur. <laughs> Irish elk. Yeah, well, yeah. Um. Did you guys ever see the, um, I don't know if it was DreamWorks or whatever, but it was a movie that came out in like the, around 2000-ish called Dinosaur. I mm -hmm. remember that yeah. film. I remember that. That was one we had on VHS. I think I had on VHS oh, too. The Megalodon would count, right? Is Megalodon. So? It, Megalodon isn't a dinosaur though. Is it it's not? It's like a shark thing, right? Yeah. It's Megalodon is a dinosaur. Shark. Well, just because it's a prehistoric fish doesn't mean it's a dinosaur. Sure, but does it count? It, it no. lived 23 to 3.6 million years ago, so it's well after the dinosaurs. Yeah, but does it count? I don't think that counts. No. I don't see how it can possibly count. It's cool, though, so does it count? That is, they are cool, however, I don't think that they qualify do you as think a, Do you think a Megalodon is cooler than a Tyrannosaurus Rex? Um... I think T-Rex is cooler than Megalodon. Megalodon is big shark. Well, I, 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 I'd imagine that cool factor is just, you know, we can make anything the coolest thing. It's not going to be very objective, right? In fact, a lot uh, of people don't think yeah, the T-Rex is cool because he's too lame. Like, it's like the obvious one. Wow. Well, I get it, but it is still pretty cool. It's cool. Look it at it. Cool. Well, you don't have to tell me. I think he's cool as fuck, but... <laughs> No. Just because it's the most popular one doesn't mean he's any less cool. What was the creature in um, Jura the one that ate the Indominus Rex? What was that? Uh, yeah, what the is Mega that one Dominus. called? Because that one's the, cool. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up. Hold on. Oh, the there is one like... Um, let me see. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, it is a Mosasaurus. Mosasaurus, I think. 
Mosasaurus, yeah. The Pachycephalosaurus, which is the one with the big bone head, was like a battering ram. That's that's cool that that can just eventually, if you just you know well, that one, the fact that that thing was able to just evolve to be so, like that was a thing, you know, that's that's crazy. They uh, that one was all over the marketing for Fallen Kingdom for some fucking reason. Because it was in the film for five seconds to get him out of trouble. Well, it was super because helpful for the plot. That, that really is one of the worst movies ever made. It's terrible. It is. It is. Like, no joke, chat. I know I know because things are really, really bad. And so we say this all the time. But, like, that is actually one of the worst movies ever made. Oh, I'm sure they know. I had a whole video on it. <laughs> where I was very angrily lamenting the fucking IP of Jurassic Park. I had a cool as fuck dinosaur book when I was a kid, and it had, and it was like hardcore, so it would show like dinosaurs eating other dinosaurs and really scary looking ones with like, and they had like the, some of them had the plumage on them, and this was way back in the day, so we didn't know as much as we do now, but still like it would, there was a creepy ass looking dinosaurs and they were scary, and it, it was like, man, it, it was, I, I wish, I, 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 just, I wish I knew what that book was because I'd be curious to go back and look through those images now um, that I'm not, you know, as young and just kind of see what I can draw from them because sometimes when you're a kid and you get those books about like science and biology and they talk about like I had one that talked about like the giant insects that used to exist like centipedes as big as buses and bullshit like that mm -hmm. from the prehistoric times and that's like terrifying Especially when they show these huge ass centipedes just like spearing this dinosaur creature with its mandibles, and you're like, fuck me! Jeez. Jeez Louise. Uh, I remember when I read the Wheel of Time books years ago, how I wanted someone to make a TV show of it. Years later, it was announced, and I was trembled. Well. <laughs> Yeah, nobody wants anything being made about this stuff anymore. Please leave it alone. Don't, Dude, don't oh my it. goodness. Oh my goodness, let me show you this. This is amazing. I was, I, you know, I just brought up the Pachycephalosaurus, right? And sure enough, I clicked the next image here. And they're using a Shiba Inu as a reference for its size. Hey. Yo, what's up? That's, that's, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. They also have a chicken. <laughs> so, just in case you don't know the doggo, you've got to know a chicken. Everyone knows chickens. I need to put some chicken in the oven here soon, so that by the time, because I leave them in for about uh, forty-five, fifty minutes, something like that. Thanks for telling us. Yeah. Well, when. When um, you, I guess when we're about an hour away, give me a holler and I'll go put some chimkin in the oven. It's going to be much more dependent on you guys than it is me. Yeah. Um, I heard the Game of Thrones prequel show was cancelled after filming a $30 million pilot episode. Yeah, it's with Naomi Watts, apparently. It, uh, it, it's been made, but it it's not gone through. It'd be cool to see it, just to see what they decided looks shit, you know? Hi, F Ringy. Hey. Leg Mutant is my favorite lesser seen Futurama character. What's yours? Leg Mutant. Is he the one with the leg on his head? I guess so, yeah. I can't remember as much about him. Oh, no. Leg Mutant was the leg with the hat. <laughs> He's oh, just the that leg. guy, right. Yeah. That one's funny. <laughs> just a funny looking character. It's just a leg with a face and mm. a hat. <laughs> Lesser scene character, so Roberto's probably gonna come up. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, I like I like Flexo. Oh damn! I I know the name, but now so, I'm blanking. Basically Bender, but with a. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I there that him being evil, and it yeah. turns out Bender was the evil one. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, arrested. What? Wait a minute. <laughs> Take him away. Rax can't have his mom make his chicken. So when your parents cook for you, it is a special occasion, right? It's like a holiday or a birth. It's some kind of gathering or they invite you over because they, you know, want you to, or maybe in your, maybe some people's case, they want you to stay far away. Or you're away, five but, years you know, old. Like, are you five years old? You know, there there should be some. Uh, there should be a reason why your parents are making food for you once you reach like adulthood. You know, um, but because normally I make my own. I, I do. I, I normally feed myself. Loser. Oh. Yeah. Um. And Mola, could you rally? Oh wait, did you pick someone? Three. Oh. Wait, what? Uh, what was the question? Who's your favorite lesser known character from Futurama when this was the oh, red yeah. mutant guy? Uh, lesser known, so it couldn't be like a supporting... Uh, damn. Um. Hmm. I don't know at the moment because the problem is when i think about i'm thinking supporting characters like zap brannigan or something which is probably not what the question was asking um hmm and like mom wouldn't count either she's she's more of a recurring character too ah uh, hmm i mean does it count if i pick god from the episode where Bender is God. I think you probably, if you can pick the Leg Mutant Man, you can probably pick that. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think someone said in chat Scruffy. Scruffy definitely slots into recurring character. If we're talking one-off, would probably be I'm God. Scruffy, the Janer. There's, I really like that conversation between Bender and him. Yeah. If you do things right, people won't be sure you've done anything at all. Uh, if it's all real and safe, which would you visit? Jurassic Park or World? And what is your favorite extinct animal during the Ice Age? Uh, I don't know enough about which animals were extinct or not in the Ice Age. Um... As for yeah. Wild or Park, I guess Wild, because they've got way better, probably, security and technology. Oh. And just a whole bunch of rides and things. Oh, by the way, someone has reminded me of the future of one, uh, where it was the Australian guy who, <laughs> who had to do all of the slave labor because Hermes. Yeah. <laughs> You've made it so that only one Australian man is needed. I to do it. I need to look up that clip now. It's gonna be in my head unless I see it. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Any suggestions on that whole Ice Age thing? Because I don't know. I don't know either. All right then. Uh, I probably go with Jurassic World though, in terms of place I'd want to visit. Well, someone else says Sabertooth Tiger is probably the best Ice Age animal. I was like, oh. Yeah? I'd probably go with I that, think Sabertooth, yeah. <laughs> Sabertooth Tiger is awesome. I do like the woolly mammoth, though, as well. They're neat. The lion who eats tofu from Futurama? Yeah, it's great. The Crushinator. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, the neutral people from the neutral planet. Yeah. And, and uh, the the evil car, remember the the evil werewolf car? Like, oh, he's you know he's sad. No, I love killing. <laughs> like, it's just he was Crumbopulous Michael before Crumbopulous Michael had a car. Why should I believe you? You're Hitler, the scary door. Scary, scary door is great. <laughs> I must be in hell. Russian Nader, why'd you let him get away? Because I love him. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> <laughs> Santa Claus is really funny too. Robot Santa. Yeah. Oh, and the Robot Devil. <laughs> it's awesome. 
The Robot Hell song is great. Oh yeah, Robot Devil's fantastic. Do 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 little little. Publishing in decent magazines, you'll pay for every crime. Knee deep in electric slime, you'll suffer till the end of time. Enduring tortures, most of which rhyme. Trapped forever here in robot hell. Well, that's just for starters. The fact that he's fucking played a gold, a gold violin. He's yeah. got four arms. But they throw <laughs> it for... at him as well, or yeah. it falls at his head. It's yeah. fucking great. Yeah. Time for the drum solo. <laughs> she smashes him over the face. Stop <laughs> them! They cheated! <laughs> <laughs> you characters aren't supposed to say when how he's they got... feel. <laughs> that makes me feel angry. When he's got Fry's hands, he's like, they keep touching me in weird places. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think Fry says, like, yeah, they get around. <laughs> 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 uh, how does Rag survive without his? Oh wait, you answered that. Yeah, this just seems kind of sus to me. Yeah, he did, Sheer he did force it all himself. Will. It's incredible. I remember a set of dreams from kindergarten where I was stuck on a dinosaur island and had to deal with dinosaurs, cults, and dino gods. Same year as Jurassic Park three. Wow. I'm certain. I'm so sure, I'm certain, I'm certain that when I was very young, I had some scary dinosaur dreams. Well, I'll just go as far as saying that. Sounds like it would be a fun game right there. Kind of like a Turok, but with dinosaur cult as well. Why not? What is it in that? It's like genetically engineered half human, half dinosaur people, I think. Also dinosaurs. See, those would be considered furries. Nope. Oi, furry. Heading as a bot is really funny too. Uh, go, go for it though. Uh, yeah, I did some yeah, science... Yeah. Sorry, I did some science to me chat and now it's a super chat. I got a real <laughs> super chat Fringy and I'm gonna give it to you because I'm so proud of your quoting and referencing. I love you, Fringy. That's I got a real super chat, Fringy! Why are you pointing at my head, Rick? Fringy! Shut the fuck up! I'm so tired of you! All you do is whinge and complain! <laughs> I, like, I like the word I whinge. Love. It's, uh... Whinge. Doesn't get used very <laughs> whinge much. Whinge is, is a very fun, quintessentially... I, I know it's not an Australian word, but it's definitely a more common uh, one over here than it seems to be in America. In America, it would be complain or bitch or moan. But yeah. whinge... We say, yeah, that... you get whinging every once in a while here, yeah? yeah. Just whinging. It, I think it's got a tinge of contempt in it that uh that's that I like. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, you whinging, you know? Come on. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Stop whinging. It's it's almost like it's so trivial, like you're not complaining, because you could be complaining about something. I think that's the thing. Complaining? It's like, well there are things to complain about, but whinging. Whinging like, is oh. like, yeah, you're doing it about stuff that doesn't matter. Exactly. The connotation is pointless. You're nitpicking. Yep. Every frame of whinge. Mm-hmm. E4. Every whinge of pause. <laughs> Every um, whinge kinda. of pause, yeah. E-wap. E-wap. I imagine you three are the three Jaeger pilots from Pacific <laughs> Rim within three arms. Also, Metal is a kaiju for some reason. Don't watch part two. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna. I did watch part two. It was awful. Oh, no. Absolutely awful. And now Pacific Rim is dead. <laughs> it's just over. Yeah. Before it even really began. Sad, but true. Um. All right, so we're caught up to today's ones temporarily. <laughs> so, well, oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Those just today's. <coughs> uh, so we'll just catch up. There was one streamlabs one that came through. I'll sort that out. Uh, hey Morley, you're the only creator right. I've supported on this platform, and I've probably broken four sanctions to do this. Uh, but Arcane is a 5 out of 10 with plot armor and tismy character decisions. It's annoying to see it praised like a 9 out of 10. Please discuss <laughs> it. And hi, Fringy. Oh, oh hey. Um, well. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. I do not know. Finally, we have someone who doesn't like it. Everyone in chat said it's their favoritest thing of all time. Pretty crazy. 
Um, why do they let so many amateurs into writing, into the writing room? Seems like the writing in movies has become progressively worse. Any theories? Um, Nepotism, maybe. Uh, as long as it makes money, you get keep getting a job. I'm gonna say um, it's unfortunate that like writing specifically is the one that like it doesn't matter how bad it is. Um, as long as you do the thing, which is hit the emotional beats, doesn't matter how you get there. People will pay for it. Especially with how we're able to sell nostalgia now, so you don't even have to create something that has the thing they want. It's just reference the thing that had something they want. A weird world for that right now, because um, we've always done a bit of nostalgia bait. It's never been like this. And uh, yeah, the money gets them more jobs, and they keep making it somehow. <laughs> then again, didn't how did Wonder Woman eighty four do? Uh, didn't do very well in terms of like box office. Because that plus the critical lambasting it got, you'd be like, now, well, capitalism, kick in, please. Get her out. Well, the thing is, Wonder Woman 3 got, like, they announced that was a thing, like, on the day that 84 came out, and I wonder if they had waited a month, if they would have made a different decision. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, speaking of odd dreams, have you guys ever had, as many friends say it, a post-apocalyptic nightmare? My friend has a phobia of pelipers because of one. Of what? Pelipper? I don't know what a pelipper is. <coughs> um, E-E-L-I-P-P-E-R-S. It's a Pokemon. <laughs> it's the pelican. It's the Blind. pelican. Yeah. It's a mouth with wings. Okay. Alright. Um, I will say I like Wingull more than Pelipper, but... Let me look up Wingull. Wingull. Oh yeah, Wingull's definitely better. Yeah, yeah as for post Liberty Dreams, I think I've had them before, but I just don't remember much of any details. Mm-hmm. Certainly none that um, made me decide that I can't deal with a particular Pokemon anymore. <laughs> that has yet to happen. I got stung by a wasp once. Now I fucking hate Beedrill. A piece of shit. These people did this sense. to me. And he's one of them. He's just like the rest. It's true. Fun fact, the original concept for the Clone Wars was the galaxy being attacked by an army of psychotic clones. That would be an interesting trilogy. Hmm. So, like, they've gone crazy after they were involved in the war, or that they're just a faction that is crazy? There's something with that. Hmm, maybe. Uh, out of context, Rags quote, What a green dick. Thanks, Dad. Sorry, what a great dick. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> what a great, both are strange. <laughs> both are very strange. A great dick. Thanks, Dad. Uh, it's from EFAP 50, part 3. Yeah, I don't nice. at all remember that one. If it's EFAP 50, part 3, then I was probably not at my most lucid. Mm-hmm. Um... Some guy made Astartes. Yeah? I guess because there's the idea of... I think... I don't know if it was us or our Red Letter Media would have brought it up. I know that Red Letter Media has referred to how TLJ was given to some guy, meaning Ryan Johnson, as opposed to like people who've got big histories with filmmaking that sort of earn it and stuff. So, I don't know. I, I can't remember what point that might be responding to, but we don't disagree. Uh, I work in VFX industry. I'm tired of people not appreciating our work and studios treating us like slaves just because we love this job. Yeah. There's um, there's just not enough knowledge about... Dude, watching Corridor Crew should be enough for people to understand. People... It's hard. People need to watch that Life of Pi uh, VFX documentary. They need to watch that. 
Well, it's just because, like, they have those episodes where they watch something, and they're like, how did they do this? And like, they used, and then they just say all these words, and you're like, huh? And then it's like, oh, oh yeah, actually, like... this movie invented blah, 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 to do blah, 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 blah. In fact, you can't even tell that that's CGI, and I'm just sitting there like, eh. Well, so, I think one of the things that would help people out to realize is there are, like, people who, you know, you have, like, a VFX guy, it's their full-time job, and they work on a film, and what they worked on for, like, six months was two or three shots, and also might have been working on those with other people. Yeah. It takes a lot of people to achieve the amount of shots with visual effects that they need now, and on very condensed time frames. I mean, like, I'm pretty sure it's just known that, like, No Way Home, between when it was finished shooting and when, like, the film came out, there had to have been an intense crunch to, like, get all that done. So many visual effects shots. Yeah, there's a shit ton throughout the movie. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just, yeah. It's uh, post-production visual effects. It's it's hard work. It's highly skilled work. And it is devalued just because, I, I don't know. And so it has common, nothing to do with, like, the VFX guys, I think. It's even more to do with, like, the decisions made in terms of how to shoot, doing it on a certain time frame, and, you know, just, I guess, over-reliance. But I don't even know if that's, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like there'd be a lot of times where there's visual effects you didn't even know it, because that's how good it was. Yep. Um, are you saying that the one shot in Star Wars Episode 3 is just as impressive as the one shot in Haunting of Hill House? How in the world would you have gotten that from what we were talking about? Like, that's not... I, they're not the same. I, they're uh, not the same. They're doing different things. I, I mean, we, in terms of the amount of work... Uh, it's just not even close to anything of what we've... <laughs> it's different work, work, but it's all hard work. Like, that shot for the opening of Revenge of the Sith probably took months to make. And by months, I mean more than a couple of months. That was probably like a that was probably a guy's whole year, like it was several people's whole year probably to get that shot done. Um, they're different. There's different things that you value about like one is. Yep, that's pretty much what how we did, said. I don't know they how they got to this I'm point. Sure we addressed this explicitly in the episode. The strange one, um, because the. It's, it's, it's just like, you know, how the fuck are you saying that this ham sandwich is better than this chair? And you're just like, I, uh, I guess, the, well, that's not, uh, the, the ham sandwich is really well made, but this, the chair is, the, what what, this, what's happening here? Like, when did I say this? Yeah. Uh, Mother's true opinions on ham are revealed. There you go. Checkmate. Efap and friend struggle to understand Palpatine's plan. Meanwhile, I understand his plan because the dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Now do prequel memes. Um. Yeah, this is pretty easy to follow. Just, uh, because it all worked out really, kind of. At least for a while. Mm -hmm. And that, yeah. right there, is enough to say that his plan worked. It was a good plan. Best part of the prequels are the RLM videos. Um. Some good parts of the prequels. Yeah, and there's some bad parts in the videos. <laughs> so, uh. Yeah. Hi all, just wanted to say the last EFAP was amazing. Funny as hell and entertaining to say the least. Love y'all. Also high rags. Hello. That was from the 166 one, so they're referring to the Spooderman one. Glad you liked it. In canon, the clones aged twice as fast compared to normal humans. They were nine years old in Attack of the Clones, and they were <coughs> too expensive post-war. I feel like that's gonna backfire once I they get like old enough, huh? I just, I, there's just no way you can make sense of it. I think with the information that they give, it's just... It's all... needs a total rewrite. So why wouldn't um you engineer it so that they stop aging twice as fast once they hit a certain age? Yeah, they get to, like, 30, and then they just stop. Stop aging at all? Oh, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, they just they just kind of sit there until they, I don't know, have an aneurysm or something, or they have to go to carousel. I don't know. Um, where is this narrative that it took years for people to turn on the sequels? Red Letter Media just explained why they were bad. A lot of people hated them before. Um. I don't think, have we ever said that 
people took years to turn on the sequels. Like, everyone hated them from the get-go. Unless you're talking about the people who loved them, in which case, yeah, they took time to turn, of course. Um, and Red Letter Media have turned on him as well. I mean, that's just true. You can still look at their videos. Uh, they quite liked Force Awakens, and... I think Jay even compared... Um... I think he compared Jurassic World to Force Awakens as, like, Force Awakens having done better at the same thing. Um, but right now I'm pretty sure none of them have anything good to say about any of the sequels. Yeah, they're not referenced positively. Nope. Um, I know it doesn't count, but the Return of the Revenge of the Sith novel does do a lot of what you're talking about, i.e. Palpatine planning rec planting recordings, sorry, playing recordings of the Jedi encounter. Yeah, it would have been cool to have seen a lot of how he manages to manipulate everybody instead of it just being like, he just did. Okay. Uh, the theater I work at is jam-packed. Spider-Man is doing super well. I'm under so much stress because of it. Thank your local theater employees when you see them. It makes my day, at least. Hi, Rags. Hello. I agree. Especially if they do a good job. If they do a shitty job, then, you know, maybe just, uh, leave them a bad Yelp review or whatever the kids do these days. Uh, here's some coin for Rhino Milk, what you bring me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rhino Coin, is that one of the new, um, the new digital currencies, Rhino Coin? Yeah, I'm you pretty sure it's a really Bitcoin, successful Bitcoin, Bitcoin, yeah. Rhino Coin. Duck Coin. Uh, as a sign of extreme hostility, hello everybody but rags. Oh my goodness, also that's an act of war. How aggressive. Well, they ended it with also high rags, so it kind of cancels out, right? Oh, hello. Yeah. Wow, Maula's comment on how someone can like Moria and Helm's Deep, but be bored by Pelennor Fields exactly describes my initial viewing experience. Yeah, I know those people exist. Uh, you know, it's, it's, that's why it's tough to um, appeal to boredom, because it, it, a lot of other people, like people be listening be like, huh? I don't get it. Because I found it really boring, or I found it really exciting. Uh, what is this argument? How dare consistency exist in universe? My brain. I can't. God. One secondo, I am moving things around in order to see more things. See more. Doop -doo, doop -a doo um. Okay. Um. Happy Crimbo, nerds. Oh my god. So cruel. And hi, rugs. Hello to you. Uh, I haven't just got back from the pub and I'm way out on the progress bar, honest. Oh, where is Padme? Is she well, safe? Is she... Is she alt-right? Is she alt-right? She, she must be. No. Yeah, makes sense. I throw felt that as well. it. She didn't like Star Wars. She must be alt-right. Specifically The Last Jedi, right? That's the one that... Specifically The Last Jedi. That's the one, if you don't like it, you are a Nazi. Mm-hmm. That's just true. Sad but true. Oh, well, there's so many more Nazis now, because people are like, well, that movie's really bad, so I guess I'm a Nazi. There's a, there's a direct link between the quality of Star Wars films and the rise of the Fourth Reich. Mm-hmm. Someone should consult Metal about this. Yeah, you'd think he'd do something about it. Someone in chat said, I am afraid in your anger you Epsteined her. No. She killed herself? Sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, RLM's Mr. Plinkett hates shot reverse shot, but half in the bag is almost entirely shot reverse shot. 
I imagine they would argue that that's different because it's a show where they talk about movies. Um, but you, of course, you are right. It's just a shot, reverse shot, but also a wide shot. Um, and they just go between because it just seems like it's that's higher quality than them just looking into a camera. Um, but uh, you know, you like high top clearly works his ass off to be as crazy and auteurish in his videos as he can. Um, maybe there would be something to say, like, hey, RLM, do you want to do anything, like, movie-making-ish in your, uh... Because they do sometimes do that, and they enjoy talking about it. Like, if they have a skit where, you know, Rich Evans gets shot ten times, and they do, like, the squibs and stuff. You know, you don't have to do that, but they do. I, it, it's very clear that sometimes they just want to have fun doing things. Maybe it's, it's just that's as far as it goes, yeah. Uh, don't breathe with Stephen Lang is just Home Alone for adults. Very true. Have you seen Don't Breathe, Rags? <coughs> no, I have not. Do you know what it's about? It's about the blind guy, right? Yeah, the three people try and rob a blind guy, but he's like hyper ex veteran marine man. But he, so he fucking, I think it, it sort of opens with one of them getting killed like straight away, and then he locks his whole house. So they can't get out. So they gotta, they gotta stay quiet. They gotta not breathe. Um, Ragu, what do you think of Goru from Genshin? Goru from Genshin. All right, let me say Goru Genshin. That is not what I what came to mind when I heard Goru. Very unappealing. What a ridiculous outfit. Uh, scrawny little person with a big bow always makes me go, huh? Um, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, unappealing. I'm not into the that. All right. Assuming that's a guy, I don't know. It could be a girl. I'm not. I'm not even sure. Uh, do you have let, let me show you a picture of what I'm looking at here. Um, what picture is? Uh, what about this? So you think about you think about someone called Goru, right? And it's like this scrawny kind of anime. You wanted a big golem, didn't you? Me. I thought it'd be like a big golem dude, you know, Goru, you know, but no, it's just some, just some asshole. Uh, dear Fringloid, your no makes me want to fringle your dingle, frangle your dangle, frangle your dongle, and frundle your grundle. I like how it's filtering through, yeah, uh, you missed the I, I think, but, uh, wait, I guess because it's the fringle at the big, all of the vowels. You know, just cycling through all of them. I guess they didn't do Frankel your Grendel. I guess I'm glad you like the no. Yeah, it's been cultivated over many years. Yeah. Um. Going for Spider-Man in two hours, so I'll hop off. Hope you boys have fun, and don't forget to watch Arcane. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed your uh, Spider-Man viewing. I know I, I certainly so did. Too. Yay. Um, got a new motivational quote for me. Anyone? Oh, they're asking for a motivational quote. Fring, you go. Um, yeah, I got them up. Uh, <laughs> oh, you on. just have those up? I do, because it's a good reminder of things. Um, Well-being is realized... Day. Well-being is realized by small steps, but it's no small thing. There you go. I can type in motivational quote of the day. Um, oh, and then you have one for the day. Well, well I, mean, the, the, I just clicked on images, fuck it, and I just clicked one at random. This one says, think like a proton, always positive. Ah, I don't like that one. <laughs> no? I, I don't know, just always be pos 
it's just a pun. Like, uh, you know, it's like, always be positive? I don't know. Sometimes it probably calls for just being a little bit more discerning. Jeez, I liked it. Why do you like it, Ranks? You're like a proton. Always be positive. Yeah. You should be positive. You should have a positive attitude. Like a proton. I think it's just... Uh, I think it's Are just you anti-ton? Like, is that what the problem is? Anti-tons? Well, I'm not anti-neutrons. You know, neutrons... I know, I didn't say you're anti-neutrons. You said anti-tons, which is like the broad... So that's going to apply to protons and neutrons. Oh, wait, no, no I... it's tron. Fuck. Um... Damn it. Wait, no, no, what? like proton and antiton. Antiton. Oh boy. I don't know Wait, what are that you is. Four ton are you ton are you for tons or against I'm them? too confused to answer this question. Alright. Should we should we give him a different quote because that one clearly didn't do the trick? I got I I got more. I can click uh, on another random one. I've got it up. I haven't even looked at it. I just clicked. Okay, go for it. Alright. Hard choices, easy life. Easy choices. Hard life. I like that one. Yeah, I have to do a bit of work, though, to explain why, I think. Why you um, like it? Well, because I feel like that one requires a lot of explanation. Like, if you hear that, you'd be like, I don't... Hmm. Like, if the, if the idea is that if you challenge yourself and you constantly, like, are striving for challenges, you'll find that it's actually not difficult to, like, just... In general, you always have a clear idea of what you should be doing. Just kind of, sort of keep trucking on ahead, growing and improving. And I guess the delayed gratification, right? Hard choices now lead to better things later. I, I could look up I can I can look up a Winnie the Pooh quote for you if you'd it, like. That that I you know what? I, I would like that very much. Uh let me see. I can click over here. Okay, let's click on this one. If there ever comes a day when we can't be together, keep me in your heart. I'll stay there forever. Ah, that's nice. And it rhymes. Beautiful, even. You have to um, scroll past because he had because he's tweeted some pretty unsavory things out these last few years. So you got to scroll past those to get to the the classic poo stuff. But, uh, <laughs> to get to good old Winnie the Pooh. Winnie's been through a lot, so it's yeah. Um, if nothing we do he's, matters, then all that matters is what we do. Who's got a lot of good quotes? Holy fuck. It seems like there's always people who just end up having a bunch of quotes, you know? They just rattle up, like Mark Twain. Then again, a lot of them are falsely oh, Frain, attributed to, to Mark that. Twain. Oh, 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 boy. Let me take a look here. Oh, no. Oh, you even bounce off the wall. <laughs> the cruelty of Mario Kart. Winnie the Pooh. What a what a motivational powerhouse. Oh yeah. How lucky am I to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. Yay. Uh will you do EFAP movies on Jingle All the Way this Christmas as a follow up to last year? Also thoughts on Halo Infinite's campaign. Um, I haven't played it yet. Uh, I think Muller and I are waiting for co-op. Uh, <laughs> I I don't know what our plan is with it just yet because a lot of things got in the way. Spider-Man really like eclipsed Halo. Spider-Man ruined Halo. Yes. Uh, we'll figure something out at some point. But yeah, I haven't played it. Uh, Rags hasn't played it. Mel's completed it, and Fringy's played a bit of it. As far as I know. I think I'm about halfway, but I haven't touched it in like a couple of weeks. So yeah. I was having fun. But I don't care about the story. I think I've I think I've lost pretty much all investment in Halo's story now. Thanks, Halo Five. Oh, yeah. To be continued on on Halo for now. We're at a, we're at a little checkpoint, little break. But I think all the way to, um, maybe maybe we'll check that out for some Christmas at some point. But this year was Home Alone. Uh, interesting animal of the EFAP, the Hyrax 
a cute little guy with a surprising oh hi clues relative i think that's the that's the meme nice the hyrax, the hyrax. oh i don't know Let's if it's like a see. real thing i just thought they were doing a hyrax yeah let me thing. oh the hyrax is a real animal oh the God. h y r a x and it is a uh... let me let me show you a picture of the old hyrax this is a uh... this is quite a critter this is a uh... Look at him. Oh. Looks like he's having fun. No, look at him. Pringy, you have to take that Hyrax out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Look at them. Oh, it's great. They're wonderful. Yeah, they're like little. I guess like little rodent. They're things. little moles. Little yeah, like, with little, they're like little um like groundhog mice yeah sort of things little wombos and they have um they have these like these sort of teeth they're not like i don't i don't i don't know if they're fangs but they're they're between they they look like they're between fangs and normal teeth like they're just a little pointy by the way, uh, that's it for 166. So we did that. Oh, 165 and 166 part 2 got completed with the... Okay. Well, 165 and next, okay. which are the Spider-Man ones. In fact, oh, we might have been doing backwards. some of them already. Um, okay. But we'll take a break from them to go back to today's ones. Oh, my God. Uh, where are we? Boop, boop. Odd dreams. There we go. Hello, everyone. Hi, Mags. Hi! And hello, yeah. Uh, I feel dirty for having fun with Hawkeye, despite the problems it has. Well, I'm assuming there's some good stuff in there. You're all good. You no need to feel yeah. dirty. <laughs> you can like stuff that's not... That's... Yeah. You can like stuff that's not good. Problem is, I'm just what's coming to mind in terms of just the obvious thing that I don't think is very good, but that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. I'm um, blanking. Have you guys had something like that for a show? Um... Have, I ha have I had what for a show? Were you like something in it that you believe to be bad? Um, oh, I'm sure. Definitely. I'm sure. I well, yeah, Undoubtedly. It's definitely a yes. Um, I'm just trying to, I don't know about examples. I'm trying to think. Something that you liked that was definitely that bad. That you know is bad? Are we saying unironically liked, I assume? I sure, think yeah. so, because I ironically it's too easy. You know? Yeah, um... Like, we know it's bad, but we just like it. It's probably a lot of... The final Super action crazy. scene in Van Helsing, where it's just insane coincidences <laughs> and nonsense that get people to where they need to be. I just... I really love that. It's just so funny. I mean, a lot and... of my enjoyment comes from the absurdity in Van Helsing. Yeah. Um, I don't um, know if that counts. I, I think we're going for, like... You, you know, say, for example, like, Holdo Maneuver. Like, you genuinely found that emotionally moving the sacrifice even though it's all bullshit like i'd have buffy examples but i don't want to spoil anything yeah um ah oh. it's weird to try and sift through my memory and find an example of this in particular though i'm certain um i think if one division has found. examples like that Because we like the first episodes and their I think they like, were TV actually, show quality. Like, not bad, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, but here's what I'm what I'm thinking is: is it bad that they were even in that scenario at all? Was is there an issue with them? Like, it, like it's. I don't. I don't mind the idea that she creates like through a grief some kind of alternate reality that keeps her happy, almost subconsciously. It's, it's something you can play with because oh, she's hyper powerful. Someone in chat brought it up. Yeah, uh, Darmok. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, as much as I love Darmok, that shows that that episode's premise is horseshit. Um, but it it's kind of like Spider-Man: uh, No Way Home oh, in a sense, where prequels would definitely yeah. count. 
Oh, of course, oh, yeah. Of course. I love yeah. those movies and they suck. Absolutely. And I, I like a lot of I'm liking it knowing it's badly done for the reasons they intended a lot, a lot of the stuff yeah. in there. That's mm. a good one, yeah. Even though it's not a TV show, but it's good enough and as an example. We can have fun with bad, come on. Yeah, just we're trying to give examples of like times where you're not having fun that, at his expense. Yeah. yeah, not like Birdemic, where it's like we all know it's bad, but that's hilarious. Yeah. Mula, we'll what? just I'd... take Oh, go ahead. I I bet there's a lot of uh cuz there I find um late 80s to early aughts uh children's programming, particularly Christian children's programming, to be bizarrely fascinating. And a lot of that I just like, even though it's terrible. There's some bizarre element to its design choices and that 90s-ish kind of construction of shows and the characters in them and what they wear and the costumes. There's something bizarre about that that I like. It's it's this weird fever. It's like I'm looking into a like I'm Alice looking into the Wonderland world, and it's just bizarre and crazy. Uh, not 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 Veggie Tales or Bible Man. No, I don't I don't really have any knowledge of them. Uh, but uh, but you know, stuff like that. Yeah, there's plenty of things. Mola, we'll just take this super chat over here and it's gone. Fringy, what? Mola, it's gone, Fringy. What do you mean, <laughs> Mola? It's gone. It's all gone. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Reference. Yes. No Star Wars sequel. We need Spaceballs sequel. You wouldn't want him to do that either. Nah. You no. know what you're asking for. You're. They're not gonna... Yeah, it's it's not it's not happening. Look, here's the hot take: Hollywood, just stop. Don't make anything else for a little while. Just no stop. break. Just go away. Take a yeah, take a couple year break. Think about what you've done, and uh, hopefully learn from this, and then move on. Uh, the narrative I was referring to was for the uh, for prequels. I mistyped sequels. People were hating prequels long before RLM. They just explained why best. Oh well, but at the same time, um. You have to address the fact that, like, a lot of the zeitgeist of conversation, because I'm assuming you guys were among it, and I remember my school, like, prequels were really cool. They were just cool. They were cool movies, everyone's yeah. having some fun. Um, but I remember on the internet, a lot of people had seen those reviews and were like, no, the prequels are actually horrendous, and if you haven't seen his videos, watch them. And uh, that that was, like, the, the vibe. Compare that, at the very least, to the sequels, where we can all agree The Force Awakens had a pretty good rep when it started. People were, like, really happy with it. And lots of praise coming down, and the Star Wars has not only been saved from the horrors of George Lucas and the prequels, but that uh, it's in really good hands. We've got a great cast, and just so much stuff to be excited about for the future. And then TLJ attacked. And everything went to shit. And it's super fun to look back on, because you know that Disney know that. You know that they, they were on top of the world if they look at their books and what people were saying. But then Ryan ruined everything. Also, Solo. Solo didn't help. Solo did not help. It's funny, some people might be like, well, wouldn't didn't wouldn't you say Tross didn't help at all? And it's like, I feel like Tross was just dead no matter what. I don't know what yeah, I That would have been tough. If we were given Tross total creative control and said, Alright, you can't nullify anything that's happened before. It's it's canon. But you can, you can control Tross. What do you do? I mean, we, oh, that's a, it could have been a lot better for sure. But I just think that the oh, damage yes. has been, been done. Better. I think we even said that. Like the the money draw of TLJ won't show the damage of TLJ. It'll be Tross's, and it did. And it was still seven hundred million less. I'm saying, like, it's just who the fuck was telling people to go see that movie? Everyone didn't like it. You could just not make it. It's Disney, they couldn't do that. 
I think I was uh, talking to you about that, Fringy, just like there's this need to make a trilogy when it's like, you know, you could just stop now that you fucked it up. Just you could stop. just make one, you could just make two, you could, yeah, you, there's no reason to continue. You know, the sunk cost fallacy is a very real thing. You don't need to keep doing it. Uh, you can I don't even know if it's that compared to you make a trilogy. You're supposed to. That's how you do it. Everyone's you know, prequel make a trilogy, trilogy, OT you trilogy. Make, yeah. You don't make a duology. You don't make. Uh, you don't make a. I can't believe I'm forgetting. Is it Quinn trilogy when it's that's Quintilogy? Probably. Is it Quintilogy for or would be a quadrilogy? Uh, quadrilogy. Well, quad is four. Well, oh, Quint is five. Yeah, or tet Quint is five. Was well, pentology or, or something, pent right? Pentology. So quit. Fuck me. Um. <laughs> yeah. Like. You can make two movies, you can make four movies, you can make one. Trilogy, can... tetralogy. So it's... Dodecaholodry. Obviously, <laughs> obviously two is biology, as we all know. A biology is two books. Uh, then trilogy, then tetralogy, then... Uh, quintilogy, I suppose. Or pentology. Depends if you're using Greek or Latin. Mm -hmm. Or Gratin. What comes after tet... Tetralogy. Quartet is sometimes used as an alternative to tetralogy. Quadrilogy, using the Latin pre prefix, of course, quadri, instead of the Greek. Um, uh, the first recorded... Apparently it was used for marketing the Alien movies was tetralogy. Oh, okay. When they hit... how many, sorry? So tetralogy is... tetralogy is four... Oh, and after so that, I... you get a quintet or a pentology. But what I would suggest is if, if you're going to go with, stick with either the Latin or the Greek. Don't mix and match. I was going to say, I always knew the Alien Quadrilogy because my dad had it as well. The box set. Yeah, if Quadrilogy makes sense to me, it's for Quad. However, Sextet seems to be the standard for a series of six. I guess that makes sense. Hmm. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know if it makes sense. I, I don't even know why I said that. I don't know if it makes sense or not. Uh, Spaceball's trash. We don't need a sequel. Oh, terrifying. Uh, now get Mike, Mike Stoklasa on to discuss his Revenge of the Sith video. I don't know that we have that power, but he's welcome to come on whenever he wants. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, hey everybody, and Rags, what's your opinion on Dark? I, I prefer- I, I- I- I'm- there's a time and place for it, I suppose. Sleeping and, uh, fooling around with other people, maybe, or just when you need to rest, or when you want to feel like things are calm, like maybe when you're working. Uh, but sometimes it, you know, you just need to- I mean, Sometimes you need to have a, I guess, a more uplifting move, which tends to happen when it's more light. Um, but, like, like in the bathroom, I don't like a dark bathroom. Um, I don't like a dark kitchen. But I like, like, my office space area here. I like that to be darker. Uh, same thing with, you know, over where my bed is. I want my that kitchen to be bathroom, darker I need to as see well. stuff. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And in and, and your office, if you're working on computers, it that's lit anyway, so the area around yeah. it can be can be darker, and that that's all right. It's just more relaxing, more calming, more soothing, you know? Helps you sort of drift away sometimes into your own little world. Light is more distracting, I feel. Wow, you really got quite a few people as well. Like, I, I just wouldn't have thought it would work at all, but it did. Um... Yeah, Rags and Fringy haven't seen it. I've seen the first two seasons. I got confused and gave up. Um, maybe if I paid more attention to it, but it was a really cool show. Uh, thoughts on the Netflix Daredevil show? I really like it. I liked it. I haven't seen it in a while. Uh, same. I remember loving Punisher, not loving The Hand. But I think everybody kind yeah. of agrees with that. <laughs> yeah, they're the weak part. <laughs> and then they did the Defenders. They were trying real hard to make it all work. 
and then it all well, fell apart. Defenders had a bit of a big problem in that, like, only Daredevil and uh, Lu and Iron Fist were like super relevant because it was all about the hand, and Jessica Jones and Luke Cage had nothing to do with it. It's just like, well, we're also in New York. We're here. Carry on, Moss was the bad guy in that, right? No, uh, Sigourney Weaver was, the... Carrie Ann Moss is, uh, she's in Jessica Jones, oh. but she's, yeah, no, it was, it was Sigourney Weaver, she was the bad guy. Yeah, I haven't seen any of these shows, I just know clips, bits and bobs. Yeah, uh, and then, but she, she gets killed off halfway through, and Electra oh. replaces her as the main bad guy. Well, there yeah, you go. Yeah, I know, uh, I don't know, if that's like, <laughs> I like Electra, obviously, but... Yeah, I don't know if you get Sigourney Weaver to kill her off halfway through, you know? Um. Hey guys, just curious about what you all think about How to Train Your Dragon Trilogy. Hope you have a great New Year's break. Thank you very much. You too. Thank See you. Ya. No, I only I saw the first one and I liked it. I saw the first and I liked it. I think I've seen parts of the second, but I just can't remember like anything about it. And I did not see the third. Is there a fourth? I think there's just three. Okay. There's a friend? show, right? Like an animated show? Is there a show? Maybe. I, I don't think know. There is. Let me. Uh, how to Train Your Dragon Show. It's. Uh, da, 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 Dragons Riders of Burke. On Hulu. And I guess there's a Dragons of the Nine Realms. Yeah, apparently they made two shows. How to how to train your dragon four. Alright, let me look at this. There are okay. There is How to Train Your Dragon, How to Train Your Dragon 2, How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World. And there is one, two, three, four, five, six short or five short films. There's Dragonworks Dragons or DreamWorks Dragons and DreamWorks Dragons Rescue Riders. <laughs> and I <laughs> guess there's Rescue Riders. Yeah, and there's some games, and it looks like there's a DreamWorks Dragons The Nine Realms, but there's not a page for it, it's just referenced. So I I don't... It Wasn't there like a white dragon that was supposed to be like a girl or something? Which one is that from? That rings a bell. I think that's the last, most, like the most recent one. Dragon The Hidden World? That That's right. the one. Okay, yeah. All right. Gerard I always Butler. hear that the first one is really good. That's, that's yeah, like yeah. the general thing that I hear. Uh, sorry, did you have you seen any of them, Free? I haven't, um, but I should watch the first one. I don't know if I will care to watch the other ones, but I should at least watch the first one. Three truths of life. One, death. Two, taxes. Three, EFAP always behind on super chats. And yeah. Uh, we'll yeah, no see way. if that remains true forever. We'll see. That was, uh, I'm pretty sure that quote is before Wall Street, but I know it's Lou. Like, when Bud says sure thing, it's like, there's no such sure thing except death and taxes. Yeah. Hello all, how bad is Strange in Spider-Man? So bad that he forgot his own lesson from Doctor Strange 1 where he says the warning should really come before the spell. He says it twice. Ah, that's true. <laughs> and you could even have made a funny out of that if you're gonna maintain everything the way it is. Like, Spider-Man says you should really have the warnings before the spell and he could look at him like, fuck you, even though it is his mm -hmm. fault. God damn it, Strange. God damn it, you had one job. It's to, your job. To be fair, his one job was not casting that spell at all, ever. Yeah. He should have listened to Wong. Well, he should have listened to Trailer Wong. Yeah, oh yeah, right, because he doesn't... Oh, I totally forgot. Yeah, he doesn't say that, didn't he? Yeah. I felt so deliberate when I saw that in the movie. I was like, is that... Is that their way of trying to say, like, that's why Doctor Strange felt encouraged? Because Wong was okay with it. But Wong, why would Wong just be like, leave me out of it again? It's like, dude. Sorcerer hey, Supreme. Hey, dude, you can do it. Just don't, don't let me know. It's like, wow. What a responsible Sorcerer Supreme you also, are. Like, I don't want to know about the problems, okay? Just keep them to yourself. 
Also, like, how the leave you out of it? No, that's not how the spell works. You don't get left out of it. No, everyone's well, no, gonna, no, don't. That's, that's right. Memory. Yeah, it's gonna affect you. How insane. You're right. So it was like, I would have cast a spell to fuck with your memory, among others. You'd be like, no. Leave me out of it, but do it. <laughs> you can do it. That's okay. Just don't let me know. It's like, oh, that's okay. You won't know. Such a shame. Just realized that in No Way Home, Ned can open portals based on a name, meaning Strange is very dumb because he could have uh, portaled to the villains. I don't think we're meant to assume that it works quite that way. Well, it certainly doesn't work that well, or way, um, but maybe, maybe, does it, I can't remember uh, in Doctor Strange. I think you meant to picture, you need to have a, like a clear mind and a picture of what you, like a clear idea of what it is that you want to see. I'm trying to think um, of times that would be useful. Is he looking for Kaecilius at one point? Um, well, I guess maybe in terms of finding the villains in this film, I think is what they're saying. But he doesn't know who he's looking for. So I was about to say, like, yeah, that, that doesn't really work because he doesn't even know. Yeah, but I, I, when has he ever needed to portal to find Kaecilius? Because there's the point where he needs to save the last, like, Punk. temple or whatever, but... Yeah, but I think they already figured that out, right? Because the London one got attacked, Hong Kong, they were, uh, the New York one, they already went there, so Hong Kong was the only option left. That's why they went there. Yeah, I'd have to rewatch. um... Doctor mm -hmm. Strange. I imagine it hasn't aged well with everything that's happened in the fucking MCU at this point. Well, now, yeah, with, like, at this point, how unreliable is the magic? Um, to clarify, Star Wars The Third Gathers Backstroke of the West is a voiced literal translation of a foreign dubbed Episode 3, one of my favorites. Yeah, that's possibly the earliest thing on that's been requested on EFAB that we still haven't gotten around to yet. One day. Boy. And it'll probably be pretty funny. EFAP said Tasm is worse than two. Any reason why? Tasm. So Spider Man. Tasm one is worse than two, I guess. You say. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Because people generally think that two is the worst one, you know. Uh, this sucks because like Mean Rags haven't done that in so long now that it's like hard. I didn't write it down. Um. Right. There's a lot to Tasm one. That, like, I think more doesn't make sense in Tasm 1, but it's close because of Electro and Tasm 2 being so flumpy. Uh, right. Yeah, got... I think the plot makes less sense in the first one with how everything happens well, cause... and comes together and just. Before we even get to, like, Connor's, his motivation and how everything turns out in the plot, like, Peter's origin is insane. Like, he, the way he breaks in, all of the crazy levels of, like, insane things he gets to do. And then it turns out that his dad created it and sabotaged it to the point that only his own bloodline could be able to make use of the spider venom or whatever and so it just happens that his son was fucking sneaking in there and and, and got bitten by a spider like i remember there's loads of stuff to it that's like uh, insane um tasm 2 is fucking terrible too but like i i was about to say like yeah me and rags maybe we need to rewatch it to tell you it's like wait are you watching that shit no i'm just I, I still am going to stick with... I, I do think that the first Tasm is worse. I think that the second Tasm, it got so much bad publicity, and it's more, like, cringe and more... Yeah, there's more cringe like, in Tasm yeah, 2 is more cringe, for sure. Yeah, so it, it got more infamous, but I do think the first... Oh, one and I also worse. think... I think a big element of, of uh, the infamy of Tasm 2 was the... It was so clear that you were setting up more movies. Like, That's another Tasm thing, 2 yeah. had... BBS, Age of Ultron sort of syndrome, where it's like, all right, Sinister Six, Black Cat, uh, I think Mary Jane was meant to be in it, but they cut those scenes, and like, setting up the next one, it was just, yeah. Rhino, was, right? Uh, Rhino. Oh, yeah, I mean, the fact that they had Rhino, and they just didn't do any, yeah. They that showed it in the trailer. Yeah, again, he was, was just pure cringe, but like, they were, you know, he's not as flawed as like, I want to turn everyone into lizards. And I want electricity to make the world dark so that everybody knows what it's like. I hate Spider-Man. <laughs> they gotta know what it's like to be in a world without Spider-Man. <laughs> God, they're so terrible. You know, really Doc Ock wanted to finish his experiment of the power of the sun. Yeah, create renewable energy, right? Is the idea on that one? Yeah. Broader scientific goals in mind here. Mm -hmm. Green Goblin wants to get revenge on all the Oscorp. 
Green that Goblin in Spider-Man 1, his motivation gets a little bit centered around Spider-Man once he knows he's on the scene, and it? Because he's fascinated uh, by yes. Spider-Man. He's got a little bit of Joker Robert. syndrome, I think, where he's trying to prove that Spider-Man is no different from, than him. Yeah. Because uh, he's certainly doing that in No Way Home as well. Mm-hmm. Green Goblin is pretty up. awesome. Yep. yep. Do you know how much I sacrificed? That is great. Norman's on sabbatical, honey. Oh, you know what? <laughs> it's gonna be fun to watch No Way Home in HD when it comes out. Oh yeah. High definition Here goblin is. action. I wanna see them goblin smiles in 4K. And them three spideys swinging around the Statue of Liberty with the music. No, wrong music. Fuck the Avengers music. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I like that one as well, but wrong franchise. Oh. Uh, Could you imagine if they play that in the TV show? Dude, it'd be so <laughs> fucking. Oh. <laughs> It'd just be like, you, this isn't yours. It's like, what do you mean? It's Lord of the Rings. No. Oh, this is this. Howard Shore is sacred. Nothing sacred to those people. Hey, Fringy, fuck, marry, kill, Jello, jam, and your goo. Please justify your choices by re relating to them the respective ingredients used on their recipes. I don't exactly see how I can qualify any of that, so I'm going to have to abstain. I was going to say, they're trying to get secrets of your goo through different means. They are. They are doing that, but it's also the just, I'm not sure how to answer a question like that. Those shifty goo spies. Careful. Shifty goo spies. All right, no, shitting on occupation, that's okay. Shitting on the occupation. You right there, Rex? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. What? What is this short Connery like voice? I don't, I don't know. I'm fucking tired. I don't know what's happening. Oh, you're tired again. Wow. I don't know. I just it just I don't know what it is. I just it's kind of tired. You gotta tired. you gotta eat more spinach. Talked about its healing yeah. properties. <laughs> well, I'm not damaged. I... I'm just tired. I need. Well, you know, I think what I need is I need to get some kind of a um. You need a machine know, that, like, slaps you across the face or, like, throws water at you. It's like, there you go, you're awake now. It's like, thank you, machine. Just yeah, doing my machine. job. This is what I I'll... created you for. Yeah, th what is your purpose? You throw water at me to wake me up. Splash water on my creator. I'm sure I'd be really happy about that. I'd be like, yeah, that's a cool job. Well, it's a lot yeah, of meaning in I, that. I help people. I yeah. help people. That's what I do. <laughs> I was thinking on the spinach thing. I'm pretty sure this is relatable, but how many people, when they were a kid, they were like, you know what? I want to try spinach, because Popeye eats spinach and makes them strong, and then you eat it, and then you realize the error of your ways. You don't like spinach? I, I've come around on spinach. I didn't like it when I was a kid, but I like it now. Um, I don't think I ever had spinach as a kid. It was just not really something that we ate. I, I, I say, had it really... doesn't pop up much as an option. Yeah, like salads here and there, um, but it sometimes on pizza. It's fine on pizza if you want just a little bit of extra. It's a good ingredient. There. It's a good thing to mix into things. Um, yeah. But my mistake was I wanted to be like Popeye and just eat spinach. Just eat it like straight out of the can. Yeah, it depends cool. on how you prepare it because spinach by itself is fine. It's a totally fine food. It's it's kind of like um, how Brussels sprouts get a bad rap. But Brussels yeah. sprouts can be really good if you, like, bisect them, get some oil on them, some salt, and you season them just a little bit, and then you bake them. They could be quite good. Well, I, like I feel like that's one of the lessons you learn as you get older is, like, oh, vegetables can work. You just have to do work to make them. Like, you gotta, you gotta, you, you know, it's not just the vegetables. You Seasoning, combinations, you know. I'm certainly very, I'm glad that growing up, I got a wide variety of different foods uh, to try. Um, my parents would always say, yeah, 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 they, you'd have your meat and your, your plants and, you know, the, the different things together. And so we would do things over and over, but there was enough variety to it to where I, I tried a decent amount of stuff. Well, um, so. um I maybe you can relate to that because uh i know people who have very like limited palates like they won't eat you know asian food like they'll they'll only ever eat like basically just the conventional foods like steak 
and you know like pasta or something then they're, they're, they're not willing to like try different uh cuisines from different parts of the world and it always feels like man you are missing out there i'll pretty much try stuff. anything as as long as it doesn't have like a food that i know i just do not like the taste of well yeah i'll I guess that's a thing, go right? for it yeah give it a try um you know because it's, it's and, and you know it kind of sucks right when it's like what does that person eat oh well they only eat like basically just generic western like american or you know like a british food it's like oh cool yeah burgers like, and fries and potatoes and i'm not and i'm, and I'm not potatoes, pooing on yeah. those things those things are great, i like them but, but if it's the only thing that you things. have yeah you know, i know i can I, go I, to I, a chinese place or japanese joint or a italian uh location yeah or a, a seafood indian. something i don't care for indian um uh, I, I don't think care for it just... hugely but i, love I do like indian it curries and stuff Ooh. um I, I don't like Mexican food nice. generally. Um, I haven't had much Mexican food. That's not something you get here. Um, it's all over the place not, here for obvious I reasons. I have no doubt. Um, uh, but I'm I'm pretty pretty. I like I pretty much like everything else. Uh, well, I like tortillas. They're cool. Yeah, I like those. I like uh, tacos and stuff like that. I guess it depends yeah. what's in them. Like the combination. Some of the yeah yeah. I guess a lot of combinations just don't appeal to me. But yeah, I like a good I, I like a good taco. We had some for mm -hmm. one of our Christmas era dinners, Christmas era, Christmas time sort of when, when the when the families from out of town were here, we were all together. And so for like a week, it was I was here for part of the day, and then for like half the day, I was over there, and then I was to come back. We did, we did tacos, and they were quite good. Um, so Tex Mex or Mexican? I like Tex Mex a whole lot more. Um, that's interesting to think about in terms of the AK is Alaska I'm not in Alaska I, I find that idea like of the fusion interesting that you would have like Mexican food but then you'd have like an Americanized version of Mexican food just because of the culture developing uh, in a slightly different way I would probably I probably like this version more than the the authentic Mexican food but we have we have plenty of it around here. Like people, like there are Mexican people of Mexican heritage in this state. Like we're not. People can travel and move around. The idea that it just doesn't exist is just stop. But I think I think the reason why there's not a lot of Mexican like food here is it it's you know like what you tend to see pop up seems to so, sort of like align with uh, the the like major demographics that you get like in certain areas so you got like a lot of um east asian foods uh here like chinese vietnamese thai um and all that's great and now we're starting to get a bit more japanese um cuisine as well which is cool lol, lol rags has no clue about mexican food so sad it's not sad to not know something about a kind of food there's loads Especially of foods I'm unaware of. That I've... I just, that's just a funny Like, statement. I don't know shit about Thai food. It's not sad that I don't know about Thai food. No, it's very sad. You I'm know? Crying. Don't you, don't, why don't you don't know about local Hong Kong cuisine? He's like, no, I, fuck, I don't. No, I Ranks, don't. What's your no. knowledge on Welsh cuisine? Um. Sad that you don't know. Isn't it, would you guys have shepherd's pies, right? That's something we don't eat late. shepherds. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Stuff like that is why there's racism. But That's I, why I like I just... chicken tikka madras. Is what my favorite curry probably is. The one ostage. We don't really know. We don't know. Uh, we don't really have much curry here. Um, I'm sure you can get it, but as far as it's just not a, really a thing here. Though I am glad, though, that you can go to, like, the, the grocery store I shop at. There's just a great variety in everything. If you wanted to make it, all the stuff's there. Um, that You can pretty much get anything you want here. Our seafood selection is obviously not good. Uh, but you can get it if you want it. It's just one of those, it's not one of those things that's just prominently displayed and available because we are uh, far from the ocean. Lots of catfish, though. Mm-hmm. Um, thoughts on Harry Potter? I I remember reading the books as a kid, and I liked 
some of them more than others. I like the earlier ones, I feel, more than the later ones, but I just I I don't have any strong feelings on Harry Potter, really. I've seen all the movies. I, remember... I can't remember if they're any good. Yeah, I've seen all the movies too, I think. I don't know if I've seen the last I don't think I saw the last couple, but I don't know if they're good or not either. Is that gonna be an arc we go on? A Harry Potter arc? You say that like it's upsetting, Rex. What's wrong? No, no, it's fine. I'm, uh, I, I'm just tired. Yeah, and so that's why it sounds like that. God, you're I'm, always tired I, I these know. days. Tired person. No, no, no. What about your thoughts on Harry Potter, Mr. Fringle? Yeah, Fringy. What's that, sir? We need the Australian perspective on Harry Potter. I, I don't know anything about Harry Potter. That's sad. Do you know? Do you know? <laughs> Harry Potter's um girlfriend's name um is that Fuck. like Ginger or something isn't that like her name Ginny or... isn't it Ginny right yeah that's not bad yeah I, I only know like Voldemort and um Hermione and, and Ron that's that's basically all I got mhm mm yeah you might see us blast through at some point the old Harry Potters. Who knows? Uh, Eureka 7 was a great show, but the four movies are terrible retreads that use footage from the anime. Two of the movies are almost 70 minutes of reused footage. The sequel series also sucks. I'm assuming that none of us have any contacts for any of that. I got nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I got no clue. Uh, Rags, your avatar makes you look like you are popping out of an anus. An anus? That's, um, it's not quite an anus? what an anus looks like, I'm gonna be honest with you. An anus? Why did you say, uh... That's how it's spelled. No, if that's what your anus looks like, you should go see a doctor. All of the doctors, every one of them. Because if it's green and has brown spots all over it and a, a bow, then... You ain't dressing that anus up with a bow to make it look appealing. You need to see a doctor, and you need to start. You need to start wiping. Mm -hmm. You can't leave. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's a lovely wreath. It's a lovely wreath because it's still Christmas time, and I don't think we're gonna. I think we're gonna be Christmas themed for another day. I think January first is when we're finally gonna go back to our regularly available unthemed. Um, Icons. The Christmas season will be officially over when EFAP turns their icons back to normal. Yes. Um, thanks for the green deek, Fringy. The what? There are the thanking green... you for you for the green deek. D I K. I don't know what that... Deek Deek. D E E K. I I don't know what that means, but you know, I'm glad that you're nice of you. doing yeah, well. Uh Mola is a little devil person. Ah, oh, I remember that <laughs> reference. Good times. Stay long and slice and dice, my Ewoks. You too? Thank you very much. Uh, long man, I dare you to continue this EFAP playing dead or alive beach volleyball without getting distracted, lol. I'm afraid I don't have it, but that is a fair challenge. Uh, so with both trilogies complete, which is superior, Captain America or MCU Spidey? I'm really not sure which on you'd favor. Which one you'd favor? Uh, say MCU Spidey. So... It's like... Captain America 1, I can't remember if that... It's good. I like, like it. I think it's good. Got, it's got a little little issue in the... It's got some problems with world building, world building for sure. issues, yeah. This, but uh, character is really strong. I think there's a chunk of plot armor in it as well, which is... It, I think there's plot is, armor in all of them. I would say it's just quintessential, yeah, good movie. It's just good old movie. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and then, of course, Winter Soldier, terrible. It's catastrophic. Mm-hmm. The Civil War's pretty awesome. Pretty great. Then we've got... Homecoming and Civil War, like, almost cancel each other out, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I would say so. Almost. But Winter Soldier is like so much worse. It's the worst out of the six for sure. Mm hmm. Well, yeah, because Far From Home has problems. The weakest of the three. Yeah, um, but so does No Way Home, of course. Uh, yeah. But I can see why there's a closeness. But certainly from our POV. 
But what I... The reason why I'd probably, like, knee-jerkly pick Spider-Man is because the... The arc of the three movies has just been fantastic, while Caps was, like... Scatter shot a bit. Yeah, a little bit. Like, they, they lost the plot there in the middle, and then they pulled it back at the end. Um, but I enjoy both trilogies. Definitely value both of them. They're right, like yeah. Captain America films. You yeah, have correctly yeah. said that tomboys are the superior female. Have some money and coom. Thank oh. you very much. Um, everyone names me a favorite tomboys, high rags. Favorite tomboys? Like in media. Um, um I don't... Oh, gosh, I don't know. I, let me see. Uh... Famous tomboys in media images. Famous tomboys in media. A lot um, of faith counts, hello, 100%. If faith counts, Premier, then. From Mirror's she's Edge? No. Um, let's see. I don't know. So I, I looked up, I put famous tomboys and the first person to pop up was Ruby Rose. And I'm like, no. Let me just pause no, you for a second. That's... Bola, Winter Soldier and Interstellar are the two films you don't elaborate on your criticism with. It's like... <laughs> we had a whole debate on Winter Soldier, <laughs> though. Just Winter type Soldier's in, terrible. Type in EFAP Winter Soldier. You'll find yourself a wealth of knowledge on our criticisms of it. But uh, in Interstellar, no. Interstellar, it'll have its time. Patience. It, all in good time yeah, on that nice. one, I guess. Yeah, it's not Ruby Rose. <laughs> Tomboys. Hold on, let me, let me look. Yeah, I don't... I'm not too familiar with them as characters. Um... Um... Hmm... Uh, do we have... Examples here. Uh, Jodie Foster's not a tomboy, I don't think. I don't know. Ripley? I don't know if she's a tomboy. A lot of these ones, like, there's a list where it's like, ah, see, here's something you didn't know about them that makes them one. It's just like, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I need more than that. Yeah. Well, hopefully that's good enough. We mentioned a few. Uh, yeah, I'm so I just don't know off the top of my head. Well, a lot of specific so according ones. to Wikipedia, Aowen is a tomboy. I don't feel like that's no. accurate though. I, yeah, it is uh, it just yeah, because she cool. fought? Like, is that all it takes? <laughs> I guess Arwen's a tomboy too, then. And so it's yeah, because it says it says Mulan is a tomboy. It's like what? Just because they went and fought, that doesn't mean... It, like, this yeah, just feels like just, they... If they fight, it's do they generally act or have interests and hobbies that are generally associated with men? Mm-hmm. Like, I could uh... see... Yeah, like, I, like, I don't know... Um, like, a lot of specific uh, women don't... Like, when if you ask me about tomboys, like, I like the idea. Um, if I had a girlfriend, I would hope it's a tomboy... But it's I like specific ones don't really come to mind. It's it's the idea and the concept and you know how they're portrayed in general. I like, but no specifics come to mind really. I'm sure there are out there, but I just haven't really thought about it much. I don't think about it often. Well, they ended with high ranks. Siri from The Witcher. Maybe I, I don't remember as much about uh, Siri in terms of like how, her hobbies and what she likes to do because she's kind of she's she's busy you know doing important stuff during the game so and it's not and it's not the um, it's not the the body type does not necessarily have anything to do with it you know you don't have to have a more modest chest and be more fit uh, to be a tomboy it's I think it's more the the attitude. Like if you're if you're if you like to go outdoors and you're big into guns and you like to play video games and you know things of that nature, then you you know you skateboard and you know guy stuff. Then 
you're, it's more of a tomboy. Um, reminder to be nice to service and retail workers. Huh. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're trying. They what want was... you to be satisfied. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah. You want to be nice to people. Is Feige the new overarching villain of EFAB? Um, Not really, I don't think. I don't think so. No. I don't really even think about him. Well, I mean, I don't. He's not making like. Is he, does he make the story decisions, or is he just like? I'm sure he's responsible for a lot of it, but I mean, yeah, whatever. It's, he's got uh, some fingers here and there. I would imagine, but I mean, it seems like there are so many projects happening that his role in like any one or two decisions. And he's, does he get credit is, for anything we like as well? Or? Well, I mean, he has to. He produced Civil War. He produced. He was co-producer on Homecoming, Iron Man, um, Avengers. Uh, oh, boys, there's nothing like a peach fire to put the taste of ha hair into your breakfast. What? <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just... Rags, have you ever let anyone take your onus? He's disappeared. Oh. Well, I guess it wasn't really a... Dog it's like a substantive well. question, so he's gonna be. I'm sure it's fine. Hello again. I just got back from hell. I'm the only no, one no. who cleans theaters today. One versus many. I don't like those odds. No breathing room. Um. Cleans theaters. Oh, that must suck because you know it's just dependent on the actual yeah. viewers and their slobbishness. Like, I beg you, please don't bring in the full meal and then leave it all over the floor. Please. People just drop the popcorn. It's like, oh, well, someone else is <laughs> that. That's their problem now. I wouldn't have a job if I didn't do that. I... Uh, it's not a great logic. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have a job if I was more clean, so I'm not going to be. I'm, I'm helping the economy, all right? I'm doing my part for capitalists. <laughs> I'm doing my part. Um... <laughs> uh... Puts on boots. Boom, boom. Yeah, Django, sorry, Boba had a really intense suiting up scene. He's got a cool theme. They have great music in these shows. I think it's just funny that it's so serious, him putting on his socks it's and stuff. Putting on clothes, yeah. Like a serious business, right? Uh, did you... Grumblows see the George R. R. Martin watched the first episode of House of Dragon and liked it. Still not enough for me to watch after season eight. Plans for coverage? Um, first of all, he probably would have said he liked all of the fucking Game of Thrones show. So just just let him do whatever he wants to do these days. As for coverage, don't know yet. Uh, it probably wouldn't be I mean, any. Fab. I'm not interested in watching it. So. Well, you. I, I, I'm just saying it's no. You got no additional context anyway, so it's just like a bit weird, but you'll probably see me covering it with Gary and Az on Real BBC. Right. Um, also, to show I mean no harm, hi Rags. He would say hi back. He would say hi if he was here. Just a little muted right now. Uh, Paper Mario and Donkey Kong 64 still hold up mostly. Um, yeah, no, I'd like to... I think I played a bit of Donkey Kong 64. Not a whole lot, though. I think it's uh, notoriously faulty on uh, emulators, or at least it's something to do to fix it, or do to fix it. Oh, hi, that's bullshit. Uh, hi. Um, Donkey Kong 64 did not hold up very well. I'm just, I just gotta oh, say that. Oh no! Oh no! Like, have you actually like sat down and like really tried to complete it? It's really I, tedious. <laughs> like, I haven't played it. I haven't played it in a long. Like, and I played it a little bit when I did play it. <laughs> it's and mega tedious, dude. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to find out for myself one day. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hi, I I just butted into your conversation. Nobody asked me to be here. I'm just you here now. You ruined everything. Yep. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody just said volume. Am I too loud or am I too quiet? Um, You're a little bit loud, but I can just turn you down. 
No, 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 it's okay. I want to make sure I'm, like, correct. Uh, I think the only thing is that it might be loud in a way that's kind of clipping a bit. Maybe. Uh, how's this? Yeah, that's uh, sounds better. How I mean, about this? Based off, based off of the uh, sample size of two small words that you gave us, it seems okay. Well, yeah. I, I was talking for a little bit here. That is absolutely you. You good there? Yeah. Very good. Okay, I just want to make sure because like I was super quiet last time. I just you don't, don't want to be one quiet, or the other. Right. Tear this movie to shreds. Kill it. Destroy it. And that is in reference to uh, Spooderman. They said that. I guess. Well, we sorted of that in we, some we, parts. Yeah, we did a little bit of that. A lot Other of it parts, actually. Yeah. Someone in chat. Too loud. Voice is annoying. Damn. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Flash it off. Um, I'm making a series on what makes a good movie, and I'm on visuals. What you guys said on Lincoln's video is what I mentioned about CGI. Some of it, lol. Yeah, I just feel like we'll get there, you know, in terms of the conversation. It just seems right now that, unfortunately, it really has just sort of become ingrained that we all don't like CGI, don't we? And it's like, no, no, what, no? No! What are you doing there for? I mean, Stop it. CGI can be done bad. Can be yeah, done well as well. Any, effects any, can be done yeah. bad, right? They sure can. Oh, yes. Animation can be done badly. It can be ooh, done ooh, very well. Getcha. Does Fringy Just drink milk? Uh, Ralph Bakshi. Pretty sure Fringy does drink milk. Malt? Is that like... No, milk. M oh, milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I milk. like milk a lot. I... The f what... what? Is, wow. That's a that's a joke, isn't it, from The Simpsons? Yeah, that's, that's that's everyone's slightly disappointed that you didn't pick it up immediately. I picked it up pretty quickly. Now with vitamin R. <laughs> <laughs> vitamin R. <laughs> Malk. Yeah, because his bones are shit. He's like, but I always drink plenty of milk. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I love cow milk. Also, you once said in your ukulele that game Grumps had no integrity. Can you elaborate on that? I get this question like once per half a year. It refers to um, Aaron and John separated for many reasons, but one of them was um, the idea of instead of Game Grumps being this thing where friends came together, recorded, and then put it up, it was we need to hire a team. We need to have other people making them. We need to cover every new game that comes out, and there needs to be like three episodes per day, and then there needs to be specials, sponsorships. And I think what happened was John was like, that's not at all what, like, this was supposed to be. At least that's the impression that I got from different things that have been said about him and people surrounding the the event. And then if you look at Game Grumps now, and then you watch some of the earliest episodes, holy fuck. It used to be run <laughs> by people, now it's run by product creation. Yeah. I haven't watched a hell of a lot of it, but I can see where anything could be muddied if you just go too hard. It would be like Three a day? Doing, well, they're 10 minutes. So they record like, I think once per week or something for like five hours, and then that all gets chopped up into 10 minute pieces. Yeah, but th even then, three a day, that's that's uh, that's a lot. 10 minutes? That's, yeah, it's half an hour a day. I'm I assuming guessed. it's a good model for um, something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm assuming they did it for I a just, reason. I just feel like then it you can overwhelm your subscribers and then they'll be all like, ah, oh, that's just, I guess, you know, I'll, I'll watch one and skip two, you know, I get, I, I, I th you might be right. I, I really don't know. I've never thought about it. Cause I just, I don't know. Um, I just know <laughs> John one, like feels that way a little bit. Uh, <laughs> John one, <laughs> especially after different cancellations come in. I think that he even tweeted like it was the anniversary of Sonic 06 and he's like, ah, oh, be nice to finish that someday. <laughs> I <laughs> saw that. <laughs> um, so yeah, the equivalent for like EFAP would be if we hired us a, a Team B, and then they just covered, and it was just every single video that ever gets released by all of the people that people have most enjoyed us covering, and then like sponsorship, like six sponsorships per episode. They're all pre-recorded, and we just talk about how these are actually good all the time. Yeah. yeah. When you said. When you said that we should get a team B, I thought you meant like doing what we do, like commenting on the things and talking yeah, about stuff. Yeah, that's what I thought. Just, just not as good, you know? Just like some <laughs> random people. Like, you're a team B. You just talk about this movie. Yeah, it would be yeah. like grabbing a bunch of randoms and having them do it. It would just be like inept yeah. as fuck. But 
EFAP oh, Team B. Yeah, <laughs> but like it, the, that's kind of the thing. It would be like if you sell it enough, people would be like, well, we get the Mola Rags free one every once every week. I guess we'll watch Team B until then. It's just like, yeah. Oh, this is stupid. Just get so stupid. Josh, oh. Brad, and Joe. There you go. Well, yeah, and they'd all have like super generic thoughts on things, and it would just completely like, <laughs> uh, you know, um, dilute all of EFAP into like this thing that's just not it at all. Until <laughs> enough fans bleed out and look elsewhere, and then we eventually start cancelling people because we've gone hyper uh, progressive. That's because the, the the more popular you get, the more progressive you have to get. Yeah, corporatized. But it'll never happen to us. No, we <laughs> we win in no way. We get to be progressive. We went after a woman. Rags. Definitely won't be eaten. By oh yeah, you're, you've we gone too far. Rags. We said a woman was wrong about Joker. Like we're fucked. Oh my goodness gracious! You're Is fucked there a now. Greater sin? I think not. I like Fuck Brad. Sake. The rest of Team B is trash. <laughs> I like Brad. <laughs> Brad and Team B. Brad. Is, he's alright. Andrew's okay, but... Uh... Just as long as they get rid of Derek eventually. He's only there because he's, he's he's Brad's brother. Yeah. Fucking Brad. It's almost worth getting rid of Brad just so Derek's out of the picture. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Do you know how much I've sacrificed? Like, oh. No. No, I don't. I don't. Yell at me. I, have, I have no clue. Alright, I gotta do snog, snobby academic voice. Your points are good, and your arguments are fair, but alas, you've made a singular grammatical error. I thereby pronounce myself as the victor. And hello, Rags. Hello. They defeated us in the workplace of ideas. Not even the marketplace, Not the workplace. Them. Gotta work on those ideas. Mm -hmm. We have to come together to work on ideas. There's lunch. It's it's your lunch break in the work. That, that that could be an insult. It's like, oh, you must have been on lunch break in the workplace of ideas. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Rogel, are you going to get on the drinks tonight for New Year's? Also, hi Rex. Hello. Uh, I don't know. Actually, I haven't thought of that. I oh, it is the last day of the year, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, um, boy. almost here. Wow, over here it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So close. So uh, you better anything. think quick. Wow, I'm just I'm just chipping away, working on some stuff right now. Okay, but don't overdo it. Got to celebrate. Yeah, don't overdo it, free Fuck. Don't die. You got you got to celebrate another year of craziness. Yeah, another year of. What better way to bring in a new year of work lot. other than working? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know what? That's honestly partly my thinking. Maybe that'll be a good omen to just start the year doing work. <laughs> like, legitimately, just, you know. That's my you, plan. Well, in a certain sense. Yeah. 2020 part three. No. <laughs> no! <laughs> Stop it! Hello, boys. Been feeling nostalgic lately and downloaded the Fear franchise again, and two of them are a lot of fun. What are some of your favorite horror sections on games? I really like Wade Elementary from Fear 2. Oh, um, the school from uh, Condemned. That was a good one. You remember Condemned? Um, I don't think I played it. I don't it. think I played it. Yeah, it's an old, it's old school. I think it's uh, 2006, I believe. I feel like it could even be earlier. It could be Raven Home from Half-Life 2. I remember that. Yeah, but um, I think he said, like, a s scary game. No, he said like scary game. sections from games. Oh, okay, yeah. No, I, I would agree with yeah. you then. Raven Holmes pretty cool. Hmm. I like the dungeon in Amnesia, The Dark Descent. God, yeah. We... This, this is... <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck all of that. All of the sequences in that game. They're all spooky. Um... Oh, the, uh, the, the, the ocean floor, the very, very bottom of the ocean floor in Soma. I'm yeah. talking about Soma again. Can you shut me <laughs> up? That's Spoonkey. Only that's someone spoonky. else could talk about it right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's okay. I'm sure they have a really good reason. Yeah, that's a really um, good reason. Let me see here. How about... Hmm. Scary sections in video games. The problem is I know I've got one and I'm blanking. Um, that's upsetting me. Scarecrow sections in Arkham Asylum and Night, if they count. Ooh. I got a good one. Um... There was this point, you're down like in a volcanic area in Subnautica, and I did not pick up a suit that is resistant to, you know, heat. 
So leaving the ship is a problem. So I had to leave using my uh, prawn suit to go and do some digging. And there's a particular enemy that can teleport you out of your suit. And so I was getting melted and I had like next to no health left. And I had already gone through all of my items. There are these little leeches that will sap the power from your uh, submarine. Wow. And I couldn't I couldn't leave the submarine to like kill them because otherwise I'd burn alive. So I'm trying desperately to find my way out of this goddamn cave while leeches are draining my sub power. I'm lost and I could die if I step out of this damn thing. And so it was it was freaky. I had I was also on if you die, you die for good mode. So oh, I, if, I, if one screw up and it was freaking over. So I was I was freaking out. And Subnautica is not built as a horror game. But everybody agrees oh, yeah. it's scary as shit. The, the ocean be scary. I, I mean, this one be yeah. it's from a horror game, but the, in Dead Space 2, you know, when you go into, I think it's like the industrial era. Where oh, it's got like Dead a Space, crates, yeah. The, uh, the, the, um, the shipping containers, and then you have like those. The bird Oh, yeah, the charge boys. They charge yeah, the, at you. The charge yeah. boys, yeah. Really freaky. I, I really appreciated in Dead Space 2 when you were on the Ishimura again, when it pops up. Because it just like. It's cool. You're like, it, oh shit. You're like, that's, that's the Ishimura and Isaac has some appropriate dialogue for it and you have to go on it and there's a small there's a small section where you go on the Ishimura again and it's really dark and there's like little glow lights everywhere which is how you see and I think I think that was done pretty well I, mean, um, I feel like um uh you know this this might be a, like there are just sections in stealth games like you know in like Thief where you just you're, you're hiding and you're like oh shit that guy's like coming towards me fuck is he gonna see me like just the tension of Oh, I might get caught here, you know? Just like, that's uh, you can get a lot of that in stealth games. There's some spooky sections in Bioshock, definitely. Oh, yeah. Bioshock. Steinman's. Yeah, I've had a lot of, Pretty much all of I've Steinman's had a lot of people. section. Yeah, the yeah, medical yeah. pavilion was uh, creepy. A lot of people have said Bioshock scared them. I was kind of surprised by that, but I can just... Yeah, some, it's there's totally built that way. The, the opening is like you struggle to just be alive, and then you like have all these creatures running around. You have no weapons until you finally yeah. get like... A revolver with six bullets you're just like i gotta make these count i mean it is the tone setter of as soon as you descend that dude gets killed it's like oh christ yeah by something you just uh -oh. don't understand yeah mm -hmm. i'm trying Someone to think knew. of there is a segment i will oh i will say um in in echo for those who've played it before the as the echoes are sort of so the way the game is structured is that the you're in this huge complex and when it's there's two um I guess phases when it's light when it's light and when it's dark and they alternate one to the other and when the echoes are forming when you're getting in there um they're starting to sort of manifest slowly but surely and they're like black goo at first and every time the lights are on, you could see, oh, what's this weird black goo? And then the lights go out for a little while, and then when the lights turn back on, they're closer and closer to being like a human shape. And that's kind of creepy when they kind of happen in increments, especially when they start to get up and kind of walk around a little bit or crawl, uh, crawl about. Next thing you know, they're um, strangling you! I'm trying to think of if there were any scary sections in The Evil Within 2. Because it's um, supposed to be a spooky game. And it sort of is throughout. But there's it's there's more a, a survival. It's a I think it's a pretty good survival game, mm -hmm. uh, and I enjoyed it. I'm trying to think of is there any section in that game that I it was actually oh. kind of like scary. You I would say one has that lady with all the, the hair and arms chasing you, right? That was kind of creepy. Yeah, she's there in two as well on certain sections. But there's also like some weird metal lobster type thing with an eyeball. It's just like a shutter monster. And that thing chases yeah. you, and you got to run your ass over to a gate and quickly pull it up. And you can hear her stomping around and screaming behind you as you're trying to get this damn gate open. It's pretty spooky. Mm. I will, I will say the, um, yeah, the regenerators in Resident Evil Four when you first find them. It's the noise. Yeah, yeah. You can hear the noise, and they're around corners, so you can hear them before you see them. And you can't, you, I mean, you can kill them, but unless you know how to do it, it's, it's definitely like oh shit i gotta run from them or something like that um i will say oh i might say in fallout 3 there was um what was it there was a the dunwich building in fallout 3 was like a little 
uh, because because the Dunwich Horror H.P. Lovecraft, there was the, there was the Dunwich Building, and even in Fallout Four, there was a little Lovecraftian sort of place that you can find in a quarry, and those were kind of those were pretty spooky, you know. I think those were pretty spooky. Um, I, I like those bit those homages to that sort of thing, um, especially when it's more of a, especially in four. Because in 3 and 4, because they're in the game, they're like part of the lore. So when you read the books about the stuff that happens in the Dunwich building, and when you see the the location itself in Fallout 4, it's it's weird to think about, I guess, in this universe, that sort of thing. Like It's very mysterious, and it's weird, and it's spooky, and yeah, I kind of like it. And there's no not really any elaboration on it. It's just this weird bullshit that's happening in this location. Um... It was dark, and I like that a lot. Um, let me see. There can be the caves in the forest could be spooky, especially when you're not used to the um. Oh God, yeah. You're not used to them yet. Uh, the the mutants and everything down there, and the yeah, sun sun well. of the like sun of the forest could be legs. as well. Yeah, they, um, I'm 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 for it. When they were designing Amnesia, they said like the areas they wanted to give you a rest in would often have flowing water in it because it's calming. Um. Yep. But then, so like there's that second hub area you get to, and I think there's a fountain in that, but... With uh, legs in it. <laughs> well, at first it's chill, it's just like a statue, and then when you've completed the other things in the area, because it's a very nice place, but then you get there and then like, you know, the flesh starts appearing everywhere, and there's just blood in the water, and uh, the music yeah, is much less yeah, calm, because yeah. it's like, yeah, you, this thing's getting fucked. It's, it's, it's <sighs> coming to get you. The amount it's coming to get you. of incredible design decisions in Amnesia. And they didn't learn a single fucking thing from that when they, <laughs> ten years later, made another game. Like, how? I feel like something just really happened to the studio or something. Like everyone's know. gone who was a part of it that had talent or something. <laughs> it <laughs> certainly seemed like that with Turtle Rock, the guys who did uh, Left 4 Dead. Because, like, oh, no, we got uh, Back for Blood, but, like, it just doesn't have any of the same spirit. And I think a lot of that was just because of, like, maybe staff changes or something like that. I will say, um, there was a lot of scary segments in Hellblade Sin it was Sacrifice um, they do a really good job with atmosphere and lighting and sound design in that uh, oh yeah so there's, there's some really spooky sections in Hellblade Ver yeah absolutely. there was a section where you couldn't see shit and you had to use your ears right I need, I should probably replay that sometime there's a sequel uh, coming it's out it's not a long game it's yeah now it's good time eventually yeah um yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of some other... There's probably some in Metro A Last Light that I just can't remember off the top of my head. Exodus, um, dude! Metro Exodus, the final level of Metro Exodus made my fucking skin crawl, dude. That was... I haven't played that yet. Oh, that was really good. I mean, it's it's got the, the same Slav jank that you can expect of this sort of, sort of game, but man, yeah. that last level, dude. I won't say much. It's just... It's great. I will say um, that... I don't. A Plague Tale Innocence had a couple spooky parts. Uh, nothing serious, but you know it has spooky sections in there. Um, Resident Evil Seven had some spooky sections at the beginning. Yeah, I think the first time you fight the mold in the basement, you know, just because. Well, yeah, no, I agree. And um, when you found, I think it was. Did this happen in the game, or was it just the demo where you go through the house? You're pretty sure someone's here, and then you find a tape of someone having been through and attacked in the house or something and you're like it's just really uncomfortable because uh yeah you're very limited and it's all very high detail but immersive that demo did pretty well remember demos i <laughs> yeah i miss them i miss them there is much. an aspect of terror that comes with like like non-horror elements so like um when you're playing daisy and um, maybe it's uh, you have a really well geared character. You got a lot of valuable stuff on you, and like a gunshot happens at you and it misses you, and you instantly just get full of terror and you start running because someone just shot at you and missed. And it's a loud sound when it happens and it comes from out of nowhere because that game is basically super quiet mm. and gunshots are very loud, so it it startles you and your your blood gets racing. Mm -hmm. Um, or those moments when 
again, there's some like there's a player around you and you could kind of hear him and you have that time in between, you know, what am I going to do or are we going to bump into each other or maybe are they are they in the next building over from me? Do they even know? Uh, and, you, and you get really, you know, scared because you're like, oh, shit, I don't want to you know lose my stuff and you know that sort of thing. But, it you know, it, it just depends if you're in the mindset or not. Um, but that's just the sort of stuff that comes to mind, I suppose, things like that. I don't play many s scary games, so I don't have any, you know, I'm not super into the, you know, that aspect of it. Of course, no one would know that for how long we've been on this topic. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> uh, wait, aren't Mootle and Jay already Team B? Ah, got him. Damn. Oh. Aww. So cool. It's not nice. The worst thing is, I'm cleaning and people come in right after the movie just ended. Thanks, Marvel, for the ending credits. Thing two is <laughs> worse, though. <laughs> Them kids boo on normal <laughs> days, I just watch EFAB. Oh, the kids make it really struggle. Yeah, well, um, I guess you can't go into clean until everyone leaves, right? And so Marvel movies mean you have to wait a little bit longer. Because most people don't know. stay for the credits on, like, anything else. Um, normal days I just watch you. I just like the idea that just fucking you just want to get out of your stupid cleaning people up after they drop popcorn on the floor to be like, oh, finally, Aoife. Safety away <laughs> from this. We'll be here. Uh, here's a late response to Fringy rightfully trash-talking Pokemon last catch-up. As someone who's seen season one of the anime, it's Batwoman levels of bad. Or... Oh, well, I, I don't remember much about the show. But, hey, maybe it is. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't remember <laughs> much about it. Uh, Star Wars Theory on EFAB? If he wants to, sure. Come on, talking about Star Wars. It'd be awkward, though, because apparently he loves, like, all of Mandalorian and Boba Fett so far, so... Oof. Yeah, we'd just be like, um... Oh, God, it'd be so Not awkward. Be like, what do you like about it? it? And I already know his answers are gonna have to be so limited. Well, <laughs> really cool. Uh, it's really great for expanding the world, and we'll be like, it's not, though. It's not, though. <laughs> kind of ruins shit, but, yeah. Cameraman did a good job. I see you're trying he to did. catch up on Super Chats. Allow me to intervene. By the way, did you know it takes roughly five months to watch EFAP's gaming, Batwoman, and all regular streams to be fully caught up? Once we hit a I year, we will have won. <laughs> then we can quit. Mm-hmm. We can go home. Um, at least that's how long it took me. Thanks for the seemingly endless amount of enjoyment, and most importantly, my rags. Oh, hello. Well, yeah, man. I hope, I hope you're all having fun. Got a uh, new series is on the way. EFAP Mini, The Book of Boba Fett. Full season one. <laughs> get excited. <laughs> It'll be the similar sort hello. of thing as Mando season two videos. You get to listen to me, know, we're excited. Rugs, and Frongo talking about how much we really love The Book of Boba Fett. Love it. Honestly, we're lucky to get the show. Fantastic. You actually get to see Boba Fett um, attacking people with his assorted weaponry in this. That's pretty neat. He puts on his armor as well. He doesn't fly around, but we'll get that next no, episode. No, he doesn't surely. fly around. Got out of the Zarlacc okay. pit. Um. So I guess this is, this is about Spider-Man. Overhyped, disappointing, and more endgame stupidity. Oh my. I was going to see it while I was in Washington State, but then the state froze, so, uh... I hate when whole states turn into ice. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. I'll see it eventually. Mm -hmm. and find out whether or not that's true. But for now, I'm kind of in the dark. Hello all. Was the DCEU arc abandoned? No Aquaman, Birds of Prey, Shazam, or TSS, EFAP movies? Sad boy hours. No, no, uh, as far as I'm aware... Uh, meme repository is currently chipping away at the old Aquaman. It's um the Snyder Cut was a big boy, as you guys may remember. Um, yes, not just for length, but for editing as well. So, Jonker. Um, I think Meme is trying to sort of w figure out lots of different things about how he's going to be making the next set. So you'll get them. They're all on the way, except Shazam. We still need to watch that. We haven't quite done yeah. that yet. It'll be cool to see the the Suicide Squad EFAP movies because. It'd be fun to see us reacting to all that shit first time, because I yeah, can't remember yeah. it now. I know we laughed our ass off at Weasel. 
That was, uh, oh, that was good times. Hell yeah. Uh, too bad those reformed villains have to be melted. Is it, like, yeah. let's be honest, you watch No Way Ho, but if, if you ask anybody about Kang, I'm sure they'd be like, who? Kang, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, no. <laughs> Just fucking no. Uh... First time in 155 episodes, my schedule is lined up with EFAP. Unlisted gang, rise up. Hell yeah. Oh boy. Good stuff. Uh, it's probably full of tisms, but it's the first MCU project I thoroughly enjoyed since Far From Home, and I feel like they can do a lot with how it ended in a potential sequel. Hi, Rags. Hi. They definitely can. Will they, though? They yeah. can. Not to say. Uh, today's animal of the day is the trapdoor spider. Yep. We've got a lot of it's animals crazy. of the day. Yeah. Crazy trapdoor spiders. Yeah, I remember them from so, Eight-Legged Freaks. You guys have seen that? I know I of so. it, but I've never seen it. I saw we, the trailers. That is all I got. a perfect EFAP movies movie. Like, or his purpose is it built. Now? Oh, yeah. It's like, uh, it's like the perfect kind of bad, it. where it's high budget. And there's actors in it, but it's an absurd premise, and there's going to be plenty of funny shit in it. Okay. Like a Van Helsing type. It's not going to be as good as Van Helsing, of course. That's Nothing what it is, but um, that'll be a fun Halloween movie. I've seen a lot of people, the sentiment for small soldiers keeps rising as well, so that'll be another one. Is that a Halloween movie, or is that just a anytime movie? Uh, I'd say Friday that's an anytime. Movie. Yeah, maybe, but I'd say it's an anytime does, movie. Does Christmas happen in small soldiers? I can't remember. Not that that makes it a Christmas movie, I just can't remember if it did. Uh, no, not during Small Soldiers. Well, that'll be one, too. For for Christmas? Uh, no, just in general. I don't know about Christmas. Just in general. Yeah, okay. Haven't seen Spundo yet, so I'll catch this one on Moolah. Also, Arcane is a mess and has fooled everyone via the Winter Soldier effect. Oh my god. Oh boy, what does that mean nice. specifically? Oh, what, they just got cool? Tiger. Oh, gonna make a video to expose it all. Here's to a good fap. Oh. Okay. Well, My God. Uh, let, let me know when you got that video up, because I liked Arcane. Yeah, I still haven't seen Everybody it. likes Arcane by the looks of it. It <laughs> seems that way, yeah. Um, are we wrapping up there, Mr. Rungo? Yeah, I'm starting to get pretty tired here, and there's some stuff I gotta do later, apparently. That's that phone call that I got, so... Um, yeah, I probably need to call it there for now, at least. Goodbye, oh, well. Mr. Rungo. Um, is it possible for two people to have separate opinions on the ob objectivity of a film, or is it inherently subjective? I, is well, uh, is there more to that question, or...? That's it. Um, like, I think it's worth qualifying that, like, the approach, at least that I try to, and I think we try to do, is it's not like... You're like trying to, you're going to have conversations and you're going to have debates and you're going to be trying to figure out if your own positions are solid or if the positions of uh, whoever you're talking to are solid. It's like a process. It's not, you're like trying to figure it out as you go, you know? As, I, I don't know that it's as binary as uh, implied. Um, yeah. I, I just imagine as simple um, as to say, this will happen the most with the uh, character motivation, I think. It's the hardest one for everybody to agree on what it, they're seeing. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. When it's like the hyperspace kamikaze, like the, there are mechanics at hand that are very straightforward. And um, then you get complicated stuff like the, bo the, the bombs dropping, where people are like, well, pff, what is that, gravity? Or, or is that magnets? I, I guess that could make sense. And some people are like, no, it just doesn't make sense at all because they didn't show anything. They just drop and there's no gravity. And someone else is like, it's fucking sci-fi. What do you mean? Whatever technology they have, they right, have. Right, exactly. So you get, like, the complicated discussion. But um, character motivations get real tough because of how complicated because human nature people is. people are complicated, exactly. Uh, people are complicated. And we seem on EFAB to be at the point where you cannot uh, take a core trait and just flip it uh, in an instant. But... Yeah, you need to do work. Uh, yeah, you with, with emotional states being stressed, you can take advantage of like the character doing things they wouldn't normally do and it gets really hard because everyone's drawing the line differently mm -hmm. you know uh i had a friend who tried to argue in favor of danny's change <laughs> there's a oh, reason there he's were, not my friend anymore there were a lot of, oh my god he stopped being friends no. of, 
<laughs> no, he was also a fucking jackass. I was just making a joke. But he was like, he was saying like it, how it was basically like Walter White's change. And I'm all like, dude. Oh, man. It, it, that is not no. at all comparable. That would be like if Walter White just stabbed his entire family well, to death and didn't feel bad about it. The worst thing Walt did to a kid was the Brock with um, the rice. In, and uh, when he's charged with it, he says like... Um, uh, he's fine, he's alive, but I, I I knew he'd be fine. Like, like his his logic is I did poison him, but I knew he wasn't going to die, so it's okay. That's probably the, the worst he did. To a kid, sorry. Um, because, like, Daenerys <laughs> fucking incinerated a bunch of children. I don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you do, you know? Like, she's just awful. I quite love that enough, part, by uh... the way. Um, that's, uh, the episode before Ozzy Mandius, um... Where they convince him they've got his money, and then he's like yelling at Jesse on the phone, and um, he looks really desperate when he brings up poisoning Brock, and like he he's trying to explain, it and then he just like it just stops off, and he's just like he's alive, like and his eyes are, like tearing up because like I think he knew it's something he didn't want to do. Walter White is yeah. quite the fucking character. He mm -hmm. sure is. Uh, but yeah, it, uh, it, it makes perfect sense to me that you can be as objective as you can and you can come to different conclusions to someone else doing the same thing. It's just uh, it's what the discussion's for. That's the point of the conversation, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, you also have to discuss whether or not that objective flaw really means all that much to some people, because that differs a lot, too. Oh my god, the well, amount of times think, we've yeah. been told when people live or die based on something being wrong, they'll be like, that's a nitpick. It's like, it is not! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, was it someone you were gonna say there, Fringy, or...? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. No, I don't think so. Mad Max Fury Road, Rambo 2008. Can you think of more movies that succeeded where Matrix 4 failed? Oh, do you mean, like, continuations of franchises, I guess? Yeah, because people like Fury Mad Road Max and Rambo. Fair. Um, the yeah. 2008 Rambo. Yeah. Same for, um... Uh, the Rocky... The first, like... What was it Rocky called? Rocky Balboa? Well, because you got that one, well, but then you've also got... Creed? Yeah, you've got Creed People as well. like that, right? Well, yeah. I remember liking it, but I have no idea if it's actually good or not, because I've seen lots of sentiment about it. There's a Creed 2 as well, right? Or is there not? Yes, there is. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. Um... But yeah, you know, we there was a time where you could make additional things in, in the series and people wouldn't be sad. Yeah. <laughs> Long past it. Uh, thoughts of people justifying movies with it's comic accurate. My argument is that comics aren't always good just because they're comics. Hi, Rex. I think you know our position on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Adapting Hello, uh, also. Adapting a shitty comic really well gives you a shitty movie, does it not? <laughs> uh, yeah. At least it's faithful. So, yeah, I mean, I just I don't know what else we would say about that. You, you probably know how we feel. Arcane was okay, but not great. Also, hi, Rex. Hello. All right. That's a lot of arcane hatred that we've had just a little bit recently. Today, Maybe yeah, it's because we were asking for it. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Give us your what hatred. We? Um, yeah. Well, we've pointed out many times that everyone loves it, so maybe we've encouraged. Everyone loves it, so, yeah. And they're knows? like, ah, ah, bitch. Nah, uh, It'd be uh, nice uh. if this is just one way, like, yeah, everybody agrees that it's great and it is. That'll be fun. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. We Indeed. will, um... I guess... You know, just to remind, happy new year to everybody because we won't be seeing you until. Mm -hmm. well, the, the... I think it will be rung in with. Uh, I'm going to be on FNT tomorrow. It is tomorrow for me still for another six minutes. Um, and for Americans. And they'll be doing just the streaming the new year in, I think. Um, and then the following day we're doing, uh, doing a Fappens for the first day of the year. Well, Ooh. second for me, but hey, you know. Yeah. That's, that's nice. You. That yeah, I, I think it's pretty neat. Uh, who knows what it'll be about? We've had a bazillion requests for particular things. It might just be that. Uh, but who knows? Thanks so much for hanging, for chatting, and for the donations. We will yeah see you next time. Well, wait, will we see them again this year? I no. man, <laughs> if uh. you were listening. <laughs> oh, I was. I'm sorry. I was like, I was. It's weird. I was like staring at the icons, but. 
just that yeah no i i know i know that feeling you were thinking... no we won't rag sorry this is this is a happy happy new year for from uh for me goodbye 2021 oh, yeah, goodbye, efap thought you were okay-ish yeah 2022 here we come it's gonna be here great we... it's gonna be the best oh, one yeah, yeah. we're gonna yeah. fuck you in the asshole happy new don't year. let us down this time yeah, Fucker, yeah. grab them Smack him. Okay, bye bye. Goodbye, bye. Everybody. Oh fuck, there's one more. Uh, every oh <laughs> every arcane critique I've seen is poor. Not kidding. All right, we'll we'll check yeah, it out at some going. point. We'll find yeah, out eventually. Yeah, we'll it's find 2022. out sometime. in 2022. Yeah, guys, the next be great. year. Okay. Bye bye. See you bye, later, everyone. Everybody. Bye. bye.